Good evening, party people, and welcome back to the bar with an X. My name is Cameron, and I will be your bartender for this evening. It'll be the last one for a while. Good evening, everybody. Let's start off with a couple of uh, business newses. I've done bad. I've done bad, 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 bad things. Not to anybody in particular, except for myself, really. I have been a very unsustainable bartender slash unsustainable content creator for the past couple of months now, and I hate to admit it, but we are finally here. I see Imi Chow popping in. Anna just kicked her feet up onto the bar, which you can see her beautiful little plaid slippers, of which I am wearing some as well, actually. We're kind of matching in a way. Also, you like this outfit? I think I finally nailed the bar with the next outfit that I want to wear for every stream going forward on the last one that will happen in a little while. I announced in the Discord this morning that I'm going to be taking a bit of a live streaming hiatus because of some unsustainable practices on my part. For the sake of full transparency, I want to call out something that's kind of very, very evident in the world of content creators, and that's this whole like idea of like hustle culture and stuff. The idea that like you basically have to work yourself to the bone, put an inordinate amount of hours, and basically keep yourself under very healthy conditions in order to get the growth that you so want and desire on this place that we call an internet. And I fundamentally disagree with that. I have had some very interesting conversations recently with some very prime people in my life that kind of allowed me to confront that from an outsider's perspective. And as I observed some other people in my life practicing these things and me thinking, wow, why the heck are they doing this to themselves? I had a chance to kind of get a little reflective and realize that I was doing this to myself as well. I have been doing things that are just like, you know, staying up very, very late hours. I've been kind of pushing myself like week after week to try to get some stuff out that I honestly, I feel like less and less heart was going into it every single week going afterwards to the point where I was just kind of feeling kind of burnt out with work, kind of burnt out with the content and stuff because I was just pushing myself too damn hard. I think fundamentally, it's not that there's anything necessarily wrong. I think it's just the idea of where I really, really want things to go is just kind of mismatched with the kind of skill sets that I have right now. So all that is to say, I'm taking a break from live streaming for a little while. This will be the last bar with an X stream that we'll have for a hot minute. Or at the very least, this is my way of saying that we won't be here next Wednesday. We probably won't be here the next Wednesday afterwards, but maybe we'll be back a couple Wednesdays afterwards, maybe a couple months from now, maybe less than that. I don't really know. Um, I have this idea of where I really, really want to take the content that I'm producing and the people I have like in that had have invested their time into it as well to much, much greater lengths, places that are so much bigger than our little bar that we have here and our little mine and Anna's little rinky dink apartments. Uh, it's been so much fun. I had so much fun here. I was actually doing a little bit of reflecting and apparently we've been here for like a whole year now. We had a stream more or less every single week from there. We've had countless of different recipes and stuff, hours and hours of different content of mixological like splendor and games and interaction and smut reading streams and 24 hour live streams and stuff. And it was so freaking fun. And it remains to be, especially in memory. And I look forward to it coming back again in the future after we've kind of gotten our ducks in a row that I've, that term that I've used a couple times in the past. Um, I, I, um, that's kind of where I want to, want to kind of, I have, I have notes and stuff that I prepared in my little content notebook here. I've become very, very enamored with this idea to even have the right to call myself a content creator, which I definitely can. And with that, I have a lot of pride with it. And I have a couple of commitments to myself that I want to make as I kind of go forward from here. There are skill sets that I don't have that I need to have. I don't necessarily need to name them, but I will be working on some of them. A lot of that is just being a healthier person, getting up at better hours, just get getting better sleep and working stuff. Out. Working out, says Anna from the from the the one live audio audience, the one like live IRL audience. Everyone else is the live audience too. Uh, we're streaming this on Twitch, as you can tell. That that's what the little Twitch label is from. And and the Twitch label is sad because I'm not gonna be here for a little while longer. I assure you, I I assure you that the bar with the Nexus stands right now is gone. We're done with it. Instead, what's going to happen is that in the future, when it finally comes back, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be better, it's going to be healthier, it's going to be more sustainable than it was previously. It'll be the same size. It'll probably be the same size, maybe. But we're not getting another piece I, of I don't, the, my entertainment center slash bar with an X is a beautiful piece of furniture. And I love it very much. Yeah. That and all the you know, all the all the friends and stuff we made along the way. I've got I had this little I got this little guest book a while ago that many of folks, some of them out there right now, have their signatures inside of. And to be to be honest, this idea of what I had for the bar of the next is a lot bigger than just like the little place that we have here. It's kind of like 
you know, it's a bar that exists on the internet, which I think is a very rather unique thing. And the fact that you have to be physically here to sign this book is something that I kind of wrestle as being a little, little metaphorically incorrect in a way, but at last, that's the, you know, the, the actual nuances of that are kind of behind me now. And it does have a page in there. She writes, every time she pops behind here, she writes on that page. When she's the star, that is. Co-star, co-host, co-bartender with an X. It's been a lot of fun here. Let me see, I had a couple of points that I wanted to go through in my little content book. It's Markiplier themed. I love that man so much. Yeah, I bought it and Cameron took it. Yeah, it's good stuff. You didn't buy it, I bought this for myself. No, 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 I bought oh, it. I bought this for myself, uh, and I'm just talking about it. I bought it because I wanted the Markiplier stuff, but I couldn't decide what I wanted. And I didn't want to spend money on it, but I love spending money on you. Anyways, I had points in here. Did I get all of them? Let's see. I'm a little burnt out. Yeah, I'm also really tired all the time. I struggle from getting up in the morning. I don't know what you call that. I have a therapist. I talked to her about it. She's awesome. I've been really unsustainable. That hustle culture thing. I like, I feel like I've said so many times that I'm going to be a bit more sustainable bartender. I've never made super juice before. I toss out a ton of fruit waste that could definitely be composted. I make syrups in batches that I can't actually utilize. A lot of them goes moldy, a lot of them go bad. I can't even keep up with the sheer number of like requests and stuff that I get, which honestly isn't that much. It's not like I need a processing computer to go through them all. I just like they fall to the wayside. I'm always saying I'm gonna write something down and then I don't touch anything with it. And I just feel really, I feel really like I've missed my own expectations on that. And so I have this endeavor to to get to a point where I can much more proper, much more sustainably be able to accomplish all those things and to be able to meet not not anybody else's expectations but my own. I honestly feel that I think I I think we can we I think I feel like we I kind of hit a limit here, right? There was a lot that I didn't know about. Uh, when I first started doing these bar streams, when I first started doing Twitch streaming in general, and I had no idea about a lot of it. And I learned so, so, so much along the way. Also learning a bunch more skills and reconnecting with a bunch of really, really important people in my life and shaving off a couple of ones that were very not so good for me in the community. And that's a, that's a good thing. But I feel like there's a next level that I want to get to, and there's a next level that I want to really elevate all of this to that I just don't have the skill sets for right now. And if I am to really hone in on the, I think I'm a big believer in like, if you are really, really passionate about it, you, you dive right into it. You dive head first and you put in as many hours as possible to make it like that little baby and raise it into what you want it to grow. And I'll be honest, I have some really freaking wacky illusions of grandeur of what I want this to be one day. I actually have somebody who I've been fantasizing a lot with and saying, man, I'd be really cool if this becomes like, a studio one day. I've mentioned with the next studios before, and that was kind of an inside joke previously and a bit of a metaphor, but I'm taking a whole hell of a lot more serious now. That, that could be a legit thing. And if somebody puts their heart and soul and hours and hours of effort and blood, sweat, and tears into that concept, it could really be a thing. And I kind of want it to be a thing. With the next studios will be a thing one day. And hopefully the next time that the bar with the next pops back onto the airwaves, it will be sponsored by with the next studios, who may be headed by yours truly, maybe. I don't really know. I don't know really exactly what the future holds, but I have a lot of aspirations for it as well. And with that, the commitment is that we're not gonna be gone for a long. We'll be back. If you're watching along in like the VODs on YouTube and stuff, like more than likely, I said some time from now, we'll just, you'll just pick up at the next video. Just click next and be like, ah, it's, the, it's that time he took the long hiatus and got really emotional about it. Next, and that's fine. That's okay. This is merely a blip that we live in. And honestly, if I can be, if I can be just a teensy bit corny, mushy, mushy for a moment, this is a tiny blip that we occupy in this little place that we call the world. And the fact that you're here, we, you're here with me, of all people, is kind of an honor. And it makes me feel all warm and funny with the side. Studio, studio with an X, Sesame Chow. Yeah. It's kind of the idea one day. And I mean, like, I, we got cocktails to get to, um, and nobody's made a request yet, so I'm just kind of vibing for time until somebody does. I'm not making any, I'm not doing any recipes today. None of them are mine. Yes. How you make a melon baller? How you make a melon baller? I'll make a melon baller for you. I think I actually need melons for that. Maybe, we'll see. If nobody else has any requests, then she's, hers is gonna be the first. Now, I'm getting emotional. I am. We all are. Um, but let's see, this is what I have in mind. So I, I kind of summed it up a little bit in the Discord message that I put out and I, I've, I've put the seeds of thought into many other people in my life already. And it would be really, really cool if we can build a community where I, whatever your passion is, 
just like excel at it. Whatever your passion is, be excited about it. Feel free to explain all of these things. X with an X. X stands for, this, this, this goes so much more than just a silent X, I swear to you. There's so many different things where we can excel and we can exacerbate and we can exclaim and we can excalibrate, which is my, I don't know, celebration, excelebrate or whatever. I wanna be able to Accelerate, there we go, that's another one. I wanna be able to add th this metaphorical X to anything that somebody has a passion for. And that's a pretty damn big goal. And I mean, I got people in my life, like I like to do cocktail mixology. That's one of my things. I put a little X in my bar and that's what I did. I got, a, I got a friend of mine who does gaming. I got a friend of mine who does woodworking. I got a friend of mine who does like just general building and electronic stuff. Like put an X in it, like bring it up to the next, the next level type thing. And I just, I want to be able to see that future. And I don't think I have the skill set of doing that right now, but I really, really, really want it. And I have no idea what that looks like. Uh, so I want to take time to not only really, really put the X in the bar with an X, the X in camera with an X from a very personal standpoint. I want to see how I can like kind of bring that to other people as well. Cause I feel like one of the things that I tend to struggle with is motivation. Like, you know, the whole nihilistic view of, well, why does it all matter? Well, cause we matter because you know, we have fun with it and because we want to make a change in people's lives or at least put a smile on somebody's face. And I feel like I can, I've kind of lost track of that. It's always been in the background, always has been. Um, Anna, the fan is behind you. The, the good vibes fan, can you hand that to me? Cause I immediately wish I could grab for it right now. And I fixed it actually. Anna broke it two streams ago, but I fixed it. It's all about bringing this to the people of the world. This is a good, whoa, it's the good vibes fan. I wish I could just put a big old X on it. It's the X fan. The thanks, the thanks is so you call it. But that's that's the kind of like, that's what I've got in mind. And that's what I want to do with that. And so that's more or less kind of what I'm here to say. I want to do a lot more with this and I don't have the skills to do it right now. And I certainly can't do it alone either. So this is kind of like a, a very open invitation of I want with an X studio to be a thing. I want to be able to put the X in whatever you do. And ultimately, I just want to see what you're passionate about. I want to see like what you're into just so we can all like, you know, experience this cool little culture movement that is the life that we live in, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the information age of AI and creativity being manufactured and stuff. I just, I don't, I don't know what that future looks like, but I'd love to explore it with people who are willing to as well. So, I mean, I'll put out here now that we have a Discord server that's kind of just like themed around all the stuff that I do. And I am hoping to put in the effort to change that in the future. It's not supposed to be about me. It's supposed to go far beyond me. It's about anybody who decides to put in as much effort as you do for the stuff that you do. And what exactly that looks like, I have no idea. Maybe, maybe you paint. Maybe you draw, maybe you also live stream, maybe you game, maybe you race cars, maybe you paint little models and stuff for board games, maybe you just play board games, maybe you like are a drag queen, maybe you just do fashion, maybe you read books, maybe you write books, maybe you make carpentry, maybe you break shit apart, maybe you blow things up, like in a, in a constructive way I mean, like not like, not like terrorism stuff, I'm not, I don't want to put the X in terrorism, but like insert your appropriate hobby that doesn't hurt people here. Um, unless I guess the people who are being hurt like it, like, I don't know, maybe you put the X in triple X, like, I don't really, I'm not here to judge or anything. Triple X is sex, dude. Sex and pornography and stuff. Maybe you put the X in porn. I don't know that we, I, I'm not prepared for not safe for work stuff. I know I that there are, that there one. are children who exist on the discord, but who knows what with an X will be getting their grubby little paws into one day. I have no, no I have no freaking clue. Yeah, Anna says no okay porn. That. That's okay. You don't have to be in that department. I don't, I don't want that department. To I, I don't know what it's going to be. But it's gonna be, I, I think it's gonna be a fun time. And uh, if there's any, if there's any, if there, I mean, I'll, I'll be there. I, I don't know if that matters to anybody, but uh, I think it's gonna be fun. Anyways, I've gotten all mushy mushy, I think for as long as I want to, that is. Uh, here's to it, it's gonna be great. I see BC Awesome is popping in here saying, love you Cam, you deserve all the time you need. And I know that you've got the grit to take a passion to something beyond. Love you brother, that's brother with an X. I love that man, this is great. We came for cocktails, and we're gonna do one last hurrah cocktail thing before uh, before we take ourselves a little bit of a well-deserved break as I sip on water from my very fancy rainbow cup that I got from SeaWorld. 
got a unicorn on it. I love that. Tonight is all about suggestions. Tonight is all about chat's choice. And to be fair, if we get a lot of chats and stuff, cool. We might go on for a little while. But if we don't, then that's fine. What did I say it was? Dolphin. Oh, it's not a unicorn. It's a dolphin. I've been swiftly corrected, and we appreciate that. So the first cocktail that I have is Anna says she wants a melon baller. She's asked if I know how to make a melon baller. Darling, we have the entire wealth of the internet at our disposal. And I believe we have all the ingredients needed to Oh, am I supposed to go write this in the chat? No, you don't have to write this. I have to go right You're right chat. here. You're right here. We don't you don't need to do anything. No, Nobody right needs to do anything. I was supposed to do that. That was my one job. That's so silly. I definitely do have a, a a recipe for a melon ball here. The classic melon ball cocktail as according to the kitchen Dot com. And kitchen is spelled K-I-T-C-H-N. Uh, somebody forgot an E in there, but maybe that's like, I put the arbitrary X in my name. Maybe maybe that's just like the equivalent. I, I don't really know. To make a classic melon ball cocktail, you need two ounces or about 60 milliliters of Midori, one ounce or about 30 milliliters of vodka, fresh squeezed orange juice, or top it off with some scooped melon balls for garnish, optional. So I don't actually have any melons left. I don't think we, uh, from the melon stream, I don't think there's any of those melons actually left. So that's unfortunate. But we also, I, I don't even know if I have orange juice. I might not have oranges. Wow, silly me not having the orange juice. But we'll sub it out with something different. That essentially, we're gonna make whatever we can and we're just gonna sub it for other things. So I'm gonna do a quick melon ball cocktail. Maybe not the best melon ball that you've ever had, but whatever we've got available to us right now. Cause there's no sense in the, I think of it this way. There's no sense in going to the store and buying like three or four different oranges or even an entire orange if we're only gonna use a single splash. What is it? Fresh squeezed orange juice for topping off. Yeah, I don't even know how much that is supposed to be. We're gonna make a melon ball. Maybe it's not the melon ball, but we're gonna make one nonetheless because Anna asked for it. And if anybody out there has any suggestions or any requests for what we should do to this stream, I will also say this. There is an exclamation point suggest command that will send a message directly to my Discord. I might not make it. This is my personal messages here. I might not actually be able to get through all of them, but I hope to be able to get to them sometime in the future. Um, and offline, you could also just go to the Discord, to the suggestions channel, and make literally any suggestions there at all. I'll try my best to get to it. I will continue to do content and stuff on like Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube and whatnot. I just won't be doing the live streams here because it's just a there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. And then we'll go for it. Request is the melon baller. There we go. We'll go for it. That's one way to do the melon baller. I'm actually very curious to see if there's other, another iteration out there that I'm not aware of, at least from my own personal recipe book, and see what else there is. Melon ball cocktail. Because I don't think we have any orange juice, and I certainly don't have... I, I don't have any melon melons. I see DishesDelish.com gives a recipe of utilizing four ounces of Midori, two ounces of vodka, Four ounces of orange juice. So this orange juice notion here seems to be the one. And I think I'm gonna make a different type of melon ball. I have an idea. Instead of using orange juice, we're gonna use white cranberry juice because I think it tastes freaking amazing. And honestly, I think it's just gonna be even better than before. It's gonna be a different cocktail. A melon ball asterisk. But I need to go downstairs to go get some white cranberry juice. There's this. So actually what I've done as well is if you type exclamation point inventory, actually I'll just do it for you because this is, we're supposed to do all the work for you inventory there's a google I want it with this juice. google sheets list that has everything that i have stocked at the bar in the next all around the apartment anna one. says she wants it with raspberry lemonade yep. that's what we're gonna do it's a melon it's a raspberry lemonade melon ball and it's totally her own raz 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 lemon melon ball and that's Queens. I believe you do. Oh, yeah, I do do it. There's certain ones where I just don't have this, the first E as the three. Mm-hmm. And thank you for your request, very virtual guest of ours. What we're going to do is we're going to do this according to the recipe that I have over here, not the weird one that I had over here, which is basically just a, it's a, it's double proportions. Instead of two, you did four. Instead of one, you did two. Just, just more, more, more. And without the other scooped melon balls. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill a glass with ice and we're just going to add it all together and we get to top it off. There is no shaking done. There's no stirring done. You just build it in the glass. Dearest, being that you're here right here with us, would you like any ice in that? Specifically. Actually, it says fill glass with ice. I'm just going to do that. Let's get a little glass here. Does this, does this dye glass vibe well with you? No. No, okay, that's fine. How about this one here that kind of looks like it's made of crystal? 
little. Do you like this one? How much room do you need in this? How room? much room do I need? I don't. I don't. I don't exactly know. I, I need three full ounces, so there's not gonna be much in here. I'm gonna fill oh, it up with right, ice. I got you. Okay, Anna's gonna get me a glass of Rome picking. Where's the Yay! Oh no! no, no. Mm, I don't know. Do I want? I don't know. With the stem. What do you or want? The one without the stem. Let's do it. The one without the stem. I'm feeling. I'm feeling that this time. Where, which? Where did this glass come from? Crafting memories. Mount Hope Winery. Let's, let's get let's bring the cocktail the, um, angle over here. What does this look like? There's this beautiful glass that she's brought for us to look at. Take a look at that. Oh, you're you're cocked, ma'am. This is a little glass that she brought, grabbed. It's very red. It looks like it's been like stamped or something. Well that was the one we got. It was Mount Hope Winery. So No, yeah, it was from the Versus like the versus this guy. This is from the the taste taste philadelphia yeah, festival yeah, right it says gourmet right. shows food and wine festival gourmet shows gourmet shows oh that's so cute all right let's make a melon ball right basically we're just gonna put everything into the glass we'll bring the cocktail angle down here and we'll set things up wow look at that i'm gonna move you out of the way so that we can bring this a little little farther down a little farther down hello cocktail angle come on Come on, there you go. Hello, little buddy. Hello, little buddy. Hello, little buddy. This thing doesn't have the full range of motion that I would desire it to be, but here we are. All right, there we go. We're gonna put it back there. Dears, would you mind putting this wine glass away? Uh, Okie dokie. I can just put it back over here, I guess. All right, let's go for it. We need some Midori. Midori we got down here. It's our... Oh, wait, we don't have any Midori. What? We ran out of Midori. No, we didn't. Yeah, we did. I thought you brought a second glass. No, we didn't buy. No. No, we didn't buy Midori. No. Oh my God, we were going right into it. No, there's no there's no Midori. We have well watermelon. Do we have anything? Wow, this is off to a great start. Yeah, we used off all of the Midori last time. No. Two times ago. That's all I gone. You the new glass. No, I didn't buy the new glass. I was too busy spending my money on various other things throughout the states of the United. <laughs> This is gonna be quite the melon baller. I'm trying to think. We may have a water. No, I don't think we have watermelon spirit. Oh my god! All the melons <laughs> during the melon stream of like two weeks ago, we used all of the melon stuff. What an interesting, interesting, interesting place that we find ourselves. It makes me so sad. That's okay. It's okay to feel Are sad. You sure? I'm very positive. There is absolutely no Midori. No, I, I literally looked through all of the bottles today to put that inventory together, and there's no there's no Midori. She's she's double checking. She doubts me. There's no Midori. It would be over here, and there is no Midori. It's none of it. No Midori. None of it. Why do you? Would you like to pick another fruit? We'll make it a different type of ball. <sighs> so this is for everybody else to know. There's no there's no Midori here. There's none. I pinned the inventory link Maybe up there. So you could check that if you want to. I'm very sorry about that. I totally led you on. I love how you were so you were so keen on that in particular. Because no one makes it right. Because nobody makes the melon baller. I, I was I was just about to not right. make it right, technically speaking. She's searching for things. She's searching through the bottle collection. You, I can can I hand for you the inventory? I can hand for you the inventory list. No, I don't Here, know here's the inventory. I'm gonna hand it to you. I have it bookmarked on my phone. Here you go. No, that's Look crazy. at the inventory. No. Oh my goodness gracious, this is so funny. I'm so upset. <laughs> I am gonna find a bunch of apple things. This is why the bar with the next is closing down for renovations. It's because we can't seem to stock a bottle of Midori. I thought you bought a new one. I did not buy the new Midori bottle. I did not. I instead cleaned out the bottle of Midori that we had. Actually, here, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. This is... This is the bottle of Midori that we did have, and it is now empty. It is all completely empty. There's no more Midori left in the house. It's a moot point now. It's all gone. She's currently in the closet with the 3D printer going and uh, looking for a different bottle or something. She's trying to figure out something else. If anybody else out there has a request, now would be the time to do so. We'll queue it up for the next one. It'll be, we'll get there real quick. I promise Matt. about that. Yes, my love. The apple thingy? The apple thingy? What's the apple thingy that you bought? The candied apple liqueur by Two Trees Distillery? Yeah. It should be on the ground. It's one of the bottles on the ground. I can grab it for you if you like. I found it. She found it. 
Thing. I'm gonna make an apple lemonade thing. We are going to make a totally not melon ball. Honestly, this is basically its own cocktail. This is basically, this is its own cocktail, really. We're going to make, I am very sorry that you were disappointed. It's okay. If now we, you have to use all of those. Hmm? I do, and I plan to. So this is a different type of melon ball. It's actually not a melon ball at all. I'm gonna wipe that off the board. It's gonna be an apple ball. We're gonna call it an apple ball? Even with the, uh, what is it? It's still the ra it's still the Raz Lemon, because this is a strawberry lemonade Svedka. They we got candy it a apple. Le, le apple. Le apple? Who calls the le apple? Because it's an apple, but the lemon has love. Wait, who calls it that? You I call it that? You call it that. You call yeah. it that. I'm getting better at my. my all right, things. all right, all right, all right. We, we've got a cocktail that Anna is coined herself. She is specifically requesting the ingredients that we are going to mix it up for her. I just have to get you to start somewhere. We do. Gonna have to we like do, we do, request. we do. Absolutely. Let's see. Okay. We're going to do something that we're going to call uh, a le apple ball. Does le apple ball vibe well with you, my dear? Fine. Le apple ball? You say you say fine. I don't know if you're satisfied. I'm so disappointed. Just a little disappointed. Oh my god! This is how it is. Le apple ball. Le apple. Apple ball. Ball. The apple ball. You couldn't take it out of anything. The entire, I will put it this way, the entire bar with the next inventory is at your disposal. It can be an established recipe. It can be just a combo that you just really want to see a person live on the television slash computer screen just do. We've got spicy tinctures in there. We've got tinctures that probably shouldn't be a, a thing at all. There's so much in there. But let's do it with this first. So first we're going to fill our glass up with ice over here. Grab some ice. I'm gonna go for the mighty United States of ice. Not like the bad ice. Again, I was mentioning that we're not we're not into the whole like uh, terror terrorizing countries thing. Oh, let me bring the let me bring the cocktail angle back over here because we're actually building the cocktail now. Now it's not called the melon ball, but the apple something or other. The apple ball. The apple ball. That's what it's all about. I'm gonna put Texas in there. I just, I just feel that. I just feel that this is a very Texas type thing. Texas like apples. Texas like. I mean, I don't really know. Johnny Appleseed was a story of American folklore. who went around planting apples all throughout the United States. I don't exactly know where he came from. I don't know where he went. I don't know where he come from. Cotton eyed apple seed. Apple Joe. Apple Johnson. Apple Johnson. Joe Joe. Apple John Jojo Jabo Bobo Bobo Bobo. Anyway, I'm putting ice in the glass. So many the entire, let's see, the entire like mid Midwest and New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey. We took ourselves and the Midwest and put it into a glass for the sake of whatever this is that we're making here, which I'm sure is going to be very good. A lot of the stuff is very sweet, so it's going to be. Uh, oh, we also need the vodka. We have the, the strawberry lemonade vodka. We need something to dilute it with a little bit. Dilute on the flavor, unless you want it all. Yeah? Alrighty then, alrighty then. What? We're making it to Anna's specifications. We're just gonna see if this tastes any good. The original recipe calls for two ounces of Midori and one ounce of vodka. Now I'm thinking because we don't have the Midori there, we're gonna take in its place the sour apple liqueur that we have, the strawberry lemonade liqueur, and the two trees to make up the most of the alcoholic components. I think, I, let's see, the bottle of Midori is, what percentage of alcohol? Let's see what we say here. It says, I can't tell. Where's the percentage on this thing? It's produced by Fielding and Jones, limited in Chicago, Illinois, who knew? Jeez, I can't find the proof on this thing. 20%, 20%. So 20% of Midori is gonna be point, of the two ounces of Midori is gonna be 0.4 ounces, call that about a half an ounce. So we'll put 1.5 ounces or about, I'm forgetting my math in my head. It's, it's 44. 44 milliliters of the alcoholic stuff, and then we'll fill it up with the list of strawberry milk stuff, and we'll see how that goes. I believe this is the least sweet. This is mid-sweet, this is most sweet. So I'm gonna kind of divvy that up appropriately. Spread across one and a half ounces or so. I'm just gonna put that right into my measuring majigger over here, so I don't really keep track of our measure, uh, so I don't lose track of our measurements. We're gonna add, let's see, the strawberry lemonade in about, Let's go about, I'd say half an ounce of that in there. I know Anna likes it sour. So I don't know, oh, I'm trying to 
Oof, this guy doesn't want to. The Svedka does not want to go down properly. We'll add about quarter of an ounce of our Johnny Bootlegger sour, sour apple liqueur, and then we'll add about a this is like a full ounce. That's like 0.75 ounces of our Two Trees Distillery candied apple liqueur. And actually, I poured that out a little. I didn't put enough of the sour lemonade in there. So I'll put that up to the top. We start off with very quality cocktails here. I'm talking like the most complex things imaginable. There we go. We'll top that back off there. So about one and a half ounces total of our alcoholic spirit. Just pop that right into our glass. It could definitely be a little more green. As far as sour apple melon balls go. Or at least something related to the melon ball. And then one and a half ounces of our mixer of choice. I feel like this needs to be shaken a little bit, so let's go with that. I'll have a recipe. Do I type it here in Discord? Feel free to pop it right here in chat, Imichao. That way, it'll be right for the taking. And I'll be able to know exactly what we're doing without having to switch apps. One and a half ounces, about 44 milliliters of our strawberry ras... I'm sorry, just raspberry lemonade. It's just raspberry lemonade. It's not strawberry at all. It's just how it be. Pop that over here. Pop that over there, and that's the uh, that's kind of the, that's the recipe we got. We got a couple of things in there. That's our that's our recipe. That's what we made. That's what we made. Lovely. Let's pop it back to the other angle. I'll showcase our ingredients for the world to see. Do 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 do. Dearest, would you like to try your apple ball? I don't know. I'm a little concerned. This actually smells delicious. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Makes me feel so sad. I'm so hurt by the statement. What do you think? I can never really read Anna's reaction, to be fair. Completely dilutes the, uh, that candy apple and it makes it whiskey-like. Whiskey-like? Oh, so it tastes more like the whiskey now. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the candy apple, of course, it's a candy apple whiskey. It's a candy apple flavored whiskey. Evidently- It doesn't have the burn of whiskey though. And it's very, very light. Mmm. Oh, that is so interesting, though. I can definitely get the whole, like, the candy apple notes there. I think that's really, really prominent. But it's not like, it's a lot less apple. It's very much candy. It's not super candy apple. It almost got to taste like toffee in a way. anything else that's apple-like? Anything else that's apple-like? Actually, in the cupboard, we have an apple liqueur. It's called Berenson, and it's a tall bottle, yellow, should be the middle shelf in there, somewhere toward the middle of that middle shelf, but it's got an apple with a bite taken out of it on there. Berenson's an apple liqueur that, in my opinion, tastes really, really close to like what apple juice or apple cider would look like. We also just have straight up apple juice, if you want to add that as well, to make it maybe not as alcoholic. Wait, wait, wait. how much did you put on the other stuff? It was like We put about 0.75 ounces of the Two Trees Distillery Candy Apple Liqueur, about a half an ounce of the Johnny Bootlegger okay, Sour Apple Liqueur. Thingy. The, that thing. Okay. The measuring machine. How do I get a quarter of an ounce? Quarter of an ounce, so you'll flip that over to the other side. Okay. And the first line that you see on the very, very bottom is going to be the one that you go for. Okay. There you go. A quarter in the ounce it. Let's put that in there, give it a little bit of a spin. Let's see. I wanna know if this will taste right. There we go. Just make it a little more apple -y. Exactly how much more apple -y? That's the beauty of this. We're, explore we're exploring. Now it has a sour taste. A little bit more sour. You could try to balance that out with some more of the two trees to make it a little more sweet, if it's not to your liking. So it's sweet now. Mm -hmm. It doesn't taste as much like the whiskey, but it tastes like sugar. Okay. May I try? Yeah. It's Thank not you. really apple. What does this smell like? I would say that's a slightly apple. It's almost know. it's almost sour apple-y, but it's much more it's much more candy. It's much more that almost sugary, toffee, caramelly type apple. But it's what a were little the proportions bit. Of apple. For that? It's a little granny smith little granny smithy. What were the proportions? So this one was like a quarter of an ounce. Let's see, let's see. You put Ben Soran in your quarter of an ounce of apple liqueur. Yes. Then, did you do- There a, was a quarter of an ounce of the boot layer? Of the, was it strawberry lemonade vodka? Oh, that's what you did. Straw. Lemonade vodka. Lemon. Vodka. Vodka. About a half an ounce of the sour apple liqueur. So. A 
and then we had one point, uh, one ounce, uh, or 0.75 ounces, so three quarters of an ounce, three quarters of an ounce of our candy apple. I'm gonna fix that. What's up? What's going on? I wanted to offer a promotion of your channel using the dogehype.com. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Why don't I have the, hmm, I don't have the band button. You're not mod. I am mod of my own thing. Oh, I can click I'm this button and then get out of here. Where's the, there we go. I'm sorry, upturned wood. That's not what we play around here. Get out of here. I don't remember where the button was. It's been so long since somebody popped in with a promotional thing like that. Let's see, candy apple liqueur. Candy apple whiskey. And then there was a full 1.5 ounces of our, it was our raspberry, raz, yes. Our Raz Lemonade. I believe that was everything together. So we had, so how do I break this down? One part apple liqueur, one part strawberry lemon vodka, two parts sour apple, three parts candy apple whiskey, and like six parts the raspberry lemonade or mixer in that case. So to make this in a real oh. size glass, would you just double all of this? What do you mean a real size glass? Well, this is a tiny glass. Well, this is a tiny glass. This is holding at least about, we have two, 2.75, three, three and a quarter. Like three and a quarter ounces. That's like a that's like a regular drink. This is a regular drink size? Yeah, for example, Negronis are mixed in equal parts, one ounce at a time. It's like three ounces over a little bit of ice. This seems really intense. Mm hmm. It's got what's comes with a lot of liqueurs and stuff in there. A lot of it's a lot of sugar. And you have sugary juice too. Can make this out. A little bit of a cocktail ASMR. I love that. And you can have fun with All your right. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for your first request. I'm sorry that we didn't have all the Midori and stuff available. <sighs> I guess it's fine. Indeed, indeed. Okay. So I'll open the floor to anybody else who may have a chat suggestion or otherwise. I will say this. I don't plan on going any farther than the recipes take us. This is purely determined by the interaction of the chat that we have here. here. If you'd like to take it back downstairs, you can. I don't will know you about you. to put it in the fridge? I will, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, when I do my cleanup and stuff, everything goes back to the right places and stuff. Oh, disbelief. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry that you're doubtful. I've had many juices put on the table. Left in the, um, I'm taking them. I will, I will try to make, take special note of it then. Were left in your cooler. Okay, I will try to take special note of it then. I'm very sorry to hear that. You're Thanks, deed. All right, let's put this Berenson down here. It might come up again later for all we know. And the two trees making a wonderful, we actually picked this up while we were in North Carolina, traveling along a little bit. It's gonna be great. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what else you could do with the candy apple and stuff. A lot, of what I, a lot of what I plan on doing kind of during the hiatus, there's a couple of things that I plan on doing during my little hiatus here. I don't plan on stopping the cocktail creation. The cocktail creation will continue until morale improves and until uh, results and whatnot improve as well. And so I will mostly be living on any number of other platforms. I think mostly Instagram. Instagram's where all the uh, cocktail stuff more or less lives. So I'll be hanging on there a little bit. Just gonna be popping on stories and stuff. So if you're not already on the Instagram and you are feeling so remiss by the, by the announcement here, I would recommend following there. That'll just pop it in the Discord server. I hope to be a little more active there as well as we kind of move, move through things because honestly, I could definitely be a little bit better on that. It's a skill set that I don't have. Interacting with people. I suffer from social anxiety. It may not be clear, that is. I see BC saying, what about something purple? We have purple gin. So we actually have quite a number of different purple gins. I have a house made bar with an X purple gin. It's just butterfly pea flower and I think some beef eater gin. Uh, we also had this gin that we picked up while we were down south. Uh, this Conniption Kinship Gin, which was a gift from our pal More Than Awesome, our, Brad, our, our mod Brad. Um, let me go pull out the other butterfly pea flower as well. Um, one, I would like to use a lot faster than the other, to be honest, because, uh, it's been sitting around for a while. Let me see. EPF Gin. EPF Gin. I would say as well, there are other ways to make things purple, perhaps a little less reliably, so you could just mix red and blue together, but historically we've either made things that are just kind of not purple at all, or they're just kind of a weird color of black and stuff, and that's not necessarily the purple that I have in mind when I think of purple. But let's see, in terms of things that you could do with these purple, paper, pr these purple things here, it's a gin. So both of these are gins. You could do gin and tonics with them. You can mix anything with gin into any, you know, anything that actually has like a gin component to it, for example. I, for one, love a Negroni. A Negroni is equal parts uh, sweet vermouth, Campari, which is a red liqueur, and gin of your choice. Now, interestingly enough, the butterfly pea flower gins, when you add anything acidic to them, such as lemon juice and whatnot, they will change color. 
and become less purple and a little more pink. And there's a lot that you can do with that. For example, if you were to mix this into a gin and tonic, tonic water itself is kind of acidic, so it'll actually turn it from purple blue to something else completely. It sounds like that's a request for something. So it looks like we definitely want to use this purple gin here. And we can mix it with literally anything else. I'll remind that we have a link to the entire Bar with an X's inventory uh, up. That should be pinned in chat, I thought. And uh, it's possible that it went away. So I apologize for that. Let me pop it up. Oh, there it is. There. Oh, there she did. Yeah. Anna being the mod powers that she is. That's a Google Doc link. I literally just set that up earlier today. I realized I apparently never put the inventory of the Bar with an X up there. And as I was going through all of it, I was like, wow, there's so many different things that we have here. And that's like really freaking cool. I have, re I really had no idea. I feel like one of the things that, again, that I want to try to improve for the future is to be able to keep track of all the different bottles that we come into the collection of, all the different syrups and stuff that we make, all the different reagents. I just kind of, I have a habit of stockpiling things and hoarding things, also not very sustainable. So that's something I'd like to work on going forward as we move up to the next level of things. Dark Tiki popping in here and saying, hey, how are you doing, my dude? Honestly, man. Kind of stressed out, all things considered. Kind of spread a little bit thin, but I have acknowledged that and we are moving forward with that. This will be the last stream that you'll see from me for a hot minute or so before we go on to the next level of things. It'll be it'll be good. It'll be a good improvement, I assure you there. If you'll excuse me a moment, I'm gonna go close the door to the closet because I just realized that the 3D printer is going and I can hear it very clearly from out here. And that's why I keep the door open. We're printing some things for our wedding using a filament-based printer. My pal Dark Techie knows plenty about that stuff. I see PC saying, hmm, definitely not sure what would go well with that. Anybody else here got ideas? I'm just gonna simply call this a sweet little empress type purple gin and tonic. We've covered that on the show before. However, it's kind of cool to watch. So we're gonna do it live for everyone else to see. We're gonna do a purple, we're just gonna do a purple G and T. Purple G and Actually, I'm gonna change that up just a little bit. I'm getting ideas here. So another type of drink, when I was doing my bartending classes once upon a time at a now defunct bartending class as I found out recently called Aqua Vitae, one of the recipes that I learned was a TNT, like dynamite, a purple TNT. And a TNT is quite simply, it's gin and tonic, but it's a very specific type of gin, specifically tankery gin, a gin that honestly I don't use very often because I don't really have a lot of it, but we're gonna use that in place of here. I see Dark saying, I told you my X-axis belt broke, right? Oh, I did not hear about that. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry to hear that. Hopefully that's easily replaceable, but it's the belt, right? It's probably a kind of, kind of a bitch to get the belt back on. I'm gonna go to the corner and grab the little bit of tankery gin that I happen to have at the bar with an X. It's a teeny tiny one. Actually, hold on for a second. Why am I walking over when I can bring everybody with me? Hold up a second. The beauty of the cocktail angle is that I can unplug this thing and move you along with me. Let's see if I can get that thing working. Oh yeah, we totally got this working. We're gonna go on a journey, everybody. Here we go. Ignore the, the bucket, ignore all the other stuff. This place is a mess. We just got back from the vacation and nothing is totally clean yet. We're gonna go into our little closet here. I hope y'all can still hear me. Put everything on, the mess in here too. All the different bottles that used to be back there. We're printing a little thing. Going great, and my little tankery is down here. If anybody sees any bottles over here that look cool, not the not the thing of apple cider vinegar. I'm not putting them in my mouth. There's plenty of stuff over here. In case, we'll bring these back. Look at that. Thank you so much, closet. Bring it our way back here. Bring it our way back. Back to the bar. Next. There we go. We'll put that back up on there. Just a little bit of a a tour per se. That pops up every once in a while. Gotta, turn, gotta put this guy back up on a stand. There we go. So I grabbed a little bit of tankery gin. I'll pop the cocktail back angle. Pop the cocktail angle back over here so we can get a view of whatever glass that we're going to use. And we're gonna watch as the magic happens. I guess technically speaking, right? So your regular TNT is gonna use tankery as the gin of choice. However, we want to make it purple. So in place of that, we're gonna split the base of a regular gin and tonic, and we're gonna use half of the tankery and half of the purple gin that we have over here, and we're gonna see we're gonna see what happens with that. I'll grab one of my glasses over here. I tend to just take a little bit of a little nice spherical cube type thing, and uh, I just kind of pour things over top of it. You could do gin and tonics other ways as well, and there's probably there's a particular proportion that you would usually use. For me, I just kind of use two ounces of the gin and one ounce of the tonic. That's the type of bitterness that I enjoy in my gin and tonics. So 
I will spread that out there as well. You could also add a little bit of simple syrup if it's not as sweet as you like, but that kind of depends on the tonic the water you want to use. So I'll go over here, I'll get myself a little ice cube, or a nice sphere. I feel like this is a little ice sphere. Let's go with that. I think that'll look good. There we go. Pop a little ball in there. Move on. I see dark sand. Yeah, it's replaceable. Just gotta wait till Friday for it to come in. I'm also waiting on a new silicon sock to come in for it too. That sounds also very fun to replace. What part of the printer is the silicon sock? I don't know what part of that that is, to be honest. I guess I don't do as much 3D printing as you do. Let's see. Let me grab ourselves. We have our little tankery. And honestly, I don't think there's a lot in there. I'm just gonna say we're just gonna use the rest of the tanker. How much is that? Is that like an ounce or so? Let me grab my measuring majigger and see if that's a full ounce or so. It just about is, so. Let's take the rest of our tankery, pop that in there. We'll do an additional ounce of this Conniption Kinship Gin. Actually, I'm not gonna use this one. This was a gift from the friend of ours, and I would love to have more opportunities to taste this on its own to get its own particular flavor characteristic. So I'm just gonna use the house butterfly pea flower gin that we have. As you can see, it's got a nice purple color to it. I think, I don't remember when the last time I used this was. It's good stuff. Apparently the silicon sock is on the hot end. Thank you for that info. I completely, I, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what piece of the 3D printer that is. I'm having a hard time visualizing it. We'll add our purple which combined with our tankery has a nice blue color to it. And now the magic happens, naturally. The tankery's out, so I'll pop that into the recycling bin, which I actually nailed it this time, which is absolutely great. And we'll pop some, we will pop our tonic water in there. I, for one, really enjoyed this tonic water that I grabbed from the liquor store back when we were doing, I think it was the summer drink stream, because they were, I think the, the, one of the drinks proposed for the summer was an espresso and tonic. An espresso and tonic was actually super duper good. It's completely non-alcoholic and it tastes really, really good for somebody who, I like a lot of coffee and the bitterness of the coffee is what I, I'm kind of into. And the sweetness of the tonic water mellowed out really well with the espresso and I just, I love that. I haven't drank enough of them to be honest. I need a bottle opener for this guy. So let's pop that thing off. A little bit of tonic water. There we go. Pop that in the bucket. Oh, it tastes good. And honestly, we're just gonna kind of top that off with our tonic water. I would say to add about, I think I accidentally added two ounces. No, 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 I did uh, add a full ounce of the, full ounce of each of the gins. So that was totally on point. And I'll just kind of add up with, I could do an ounce of this, but I'm just gonna add up it here. You can add the tonic water to taste. And observe the magic happens as it turns from purple to something else completely. Not, not exactly completely, but it goes through a very prominent color change because Butterfly pea flower is actually a pH indicator. And that I think is pretty cool. That's essentially our purple gin and tonic, as you see here. What it does is it just keeps the heat more under control. That's that silicon sock that Dark was talking about before with the uh, 3D printing and stuff. So honestly, that's it. That's all it is. It is a purple gin and tonic, and it, I think gin and tonics are pretty cool. I honestly don't make a lot of gin and tonics for myself, and I think it's just because, I don't know, I feel like I have to have an excuse for that. It would probably be a more economic, it would probably be a more sustainable drink in the long run because it's only two ingredients. Both of them are really easy to get your hands on as opposed to, if, let's say, a Negroni where you need Campari, which is the bottles come few and far between. Uh, relatively speaking, for example, there's only one Campari. There's plenty of different types of gins out there. And I guess there's plenty of different types of sweet vermouths as well, but I tend to go for the Caprena Antica because that's kind of the only one that I have known. There's plenty of other things to, to go with too, but like I haven't really specialized in anything. There's a, there's a lot of effort that I feel like needs to be put into a particular niche to be able to get the most amount of context with it. And, uh, honestly, with all the stuff that we've been putting ourselves through, I haven't found the time for it. And I think that's a piece that I want to explore a little bit more. But for our purple TNT, which is our purple gin and tonic, which is the G and T, but we used a bit of tankery to make it a TNT because the gin is the T. But the gin, instead of being a T, there's also some PBF in there, the putter, butter, oh, sorry, butterfly pea flower, the BPF. So it's kind of a BPF TNT, if you will. A butterfly pea flower tankery and tonic. Now, the butterfly pea flower was not put into the tankery, it was put into a bee feeder, which was existing in the closet over there. So, nuance aside, a PT and T. It's purple. Oh, and it's got such a nice bite to it. Actually, in particular, as opposed to, so this particular ratio of the two ounces to one ounce of your gin constituents and your tonic waters are a little more alcoholic. 
It's a little less sweet. If you wanted to make this more sweet with these proportions, you can add like a quarter of ounce or simple syrup or though. Right now, what I'm getting from here is a lot of those botanical floral gin notes. It's very, it's almost like cucumber. It's kind of like a flower. It's kind of like, it's almost, it's almost basil-y in a way. And by that, I mean like basil has sort of a, a savory note to it, in my opinion. It's kind of a savory cinnamon, if you will. And there's a slight little savoriness there. That could be the, that could be like some very, very slight anise notes from the gin. That could be something a little else entirely. Remember, I I haven't tried a lot of tankery on its own, so that's a flavor characteristic that I haven't quite explored. So it might be coming from there. Um, honestly, this for me is a nice balance between the sugary sweetness of, let's say, the tonic water and the bitterness from the tonic water as well as, you know, there's others, the flavor stuff around it as well. I think this is, for me, could be a little bit sweeter with this particular portions. And you can add any number of syrups to it too. And honestly, while we're on that topic, it's purple. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, some rhubarb and rose syrup to it. Just a, just a touch to bring up the sweetness and to, again, emblazon that idea of the sustainability that I wanna, you know, better live going forward. This bottle has been in the fridge for a while now. It's very shelf, self, it's very shelf stable. It's it's been good for a while now, but even still, I make like an entire bottle of this thing and then I just don't know what to do with it. I'm at a point where I'm like, for a while I was thinking that I could do like live stream giveaways where I send out syrups and stuff to everybody so everybody can try to use it. But like the logistics surrounding that can just be a little, it's something that I'm honestly a little bit anxious about. So I just never got around to it. But I'll add just a touch of that syrup, which, ooh, actually I'm bringing the angle back over here. That is such a very, look at that gradient. I did not know that was going to happen. That is so cool looking. I see Imichao saying, okay, this is for the recipe. Do you have a can of chickpeas somewhere? I don't have a can of chickpeas, unfortunately. The inventory that's pinned up above has everything that I know to have here. And chickpeas, unfortunately, is not one of them. Aaron and I are talking, can't watch right now, but yay, purple gin, dude, that's the stuff. No chickpeas, unfortunately. I actually have, I had a container of fava beans that my, salted fava beans that my mother gave me for the, I think it was the, I think it was the Christmas holiday when I got all those snacks in my stocking and stuff. Let me get one of our bar spoons. It's a pink one that we picked up while we were on uh, one of the trips that we took. And I'll give this a little bit of a spin to add everything together. This is not any more or less purple than it was previously. Maybe it's a little bit lighter. And I'm sure it'll be just a little bit more sweet. Mmm, it's got such an interesting- ooh! So now, obviously, there's a very particular rose characteristic. So, rose, I don't think, was a part of that flavor palette I was getting from the gins before, but now it most certainly is. And I think we added, like, I'm gonna say we added, like, a quarter of an ounce of that rhubarb rose syrup. I like that, that's so different. It's still a very short cocktail. It's not very sweet, in my opinion. It could be sweeter! But this is pretty good. There's just a lot going on in there too with all the different flavor components of the botanicals from the gins and the very powerful rose flavor. And like, I'm not getting a lot of the rhubarb in there. Rhubarb is a little sour to me. And this is, this, I'm not getting into those pleasant sour notes. But the savoriness is still there every so slightly. I like that very much. Amy just says, it's all good. I can compromise. I say, kid, sand it in there with the purple drink. Hello, purple drink, sir. I don't know if your name shows up purple on the chat preview, but your name is purple to me. And I think that's very fitting for the situation over here. So yes, I will open the floor back up to anybody else who wants to suggest a drink this evening. As I announced earlier in the Discord, I'm going to be taking a bit of a hiatus from streaming. Life is kind of crazy right now. And to be honest, I don't have the skills necessary to level up the bar to the, with an X to the level that I really want it to be someday. So I'm going to go into the shadows for a little bit be existing in the shadows and different parts of the social media, internet, and whatnot. I will still be active, just not here on Twitch. So the bar with the next will be closing for renovations a bit. This space that you see here is gonna become like a cocktailarium, so to speak. Uh, I'll be trying to do more cocktail competitions. I'll be trying to do more posts and trying to get more personal with the flavors and stuff in the off time. That's my commitment, at least. Negroni, Tom Holland style. What's the Tom Holland Negroni style? We have to bring that up. Let me do a little bit of cleanup over here. And we'll see what that is so we can see if that's the kind of thing that we can do. That was our purple TNT, or technically our BPFNT. I think I actually, I wrote that in the wrong order on here. No, butterfly pea flower, BPFTNT. BPFTT. That's what we meant. BPFTT. Let me grab a coaster for this thing, put it off to the side. Pikachu can have a big old wad of the purple drink this time around. Here you go, buddy. I'll take my tonic water and that'll be good for the morning. 
I'll put that in my coffee, my cold brew. How do I know I'll do that? Oh, if I put it over on my desk, I won't forget. Or I'll just put it on the table with the rest of it. That's probably a better idea too, that'll work. Let's see, so we have a request from Kid Sandin to create the Tom Holland Negroni. I remember seeing that somewhere. I remember seeing a video, something about it, he was talking about it, and I don't remember what the details were. So let's see, Tom Holland, well, let me, let me here, well, search search with me, search, search with me. We'll all look around here. I never got it to the point where I could put this up on the screen, I somehow broke that. Tom Holland Negroni, let's see. The official clip makes a mean, Tom Holland makes a mean Negroni. It's a two minute long clip. Let's listen to it together. Hey, Goldie, I brought your cell phone. Thank you. Hey, how was last night? Great. Yeah, he was cute. Very cute. Nice. He's a bartender in this show. Hi. Hi. Excuse me? It's from Uncharted. Sorry. That's a video game, too. Hey, what can I get you? Horizontal? Great idea. Rock the tonic, come on. It's my first drink of the night. Test me a little. Well, I don't know. Uh, a Negroni? A Negroni? What? Uh... Kidding. Negroni. First made in 1919 for Count Camillo Negroni. Count Camillo Negroni. He swapped the soda water with the gin. The Americano. Yep. That's true. I don't know about the date. Can't confirm the date, but the rest of it checks. This is not really my neighborhood. Not your neighborhood? Where are you from? Oh, yeah? He, well, he's got those speed pourer action going on there. I'm about to cheat this one. So if anybody has a suggestion, say it now. I have a cheat for this one. Daddy's money, bro. Is that all we get? Oh, there's more of it. Ooh, okay, I'm getting ideas here. She's got the cigarette. I've got ideas. I wonder, I've got these Turkish tobacco bitters, and I'm just kind of wondering how that would go in a Negroni. See, he lights the cigarette. Uncharted's after credit spoilers? Is it? Dude, put the cigarette in the Negroni. I've got ideas. Dude! Is that it? Oh my god! Alright, well, apparently I need to watch Uncharted so that I can experience Tom Holland being a bartender. I, you know what? You know what? I, I need more context on that. Is he... Does he continue to be a bartender throughout the show, or is that just like a tease? And be like, oh my god, he does bartending, that's so cool. No, it's just the one scene, that's all you get. More than else, I'm saying, I love a Chinar Negroni. I don't have any Chinar, 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 unfortunately. I, there are various different others, Amaros. I tried to find Chinar at my local liquor store. Oh no, no, it was Amaro, it was Amaro Montenegro that I couldn't get my hands on. I'm sure if I keep looking though. It'll pop up every once in a while. What is this from? I want to watch it. Uncharted, where you sub out Campari for China. So tobacco bitters make sense. The soundtrack is dope. His primary profession is pirates. His passion is bartending. Pirate isn't like online pirate or like a sea pirate in the uncharted waters of the world. All right, we're going to do a Negroni. It's, it's going to be great. I promise you that. Negroni. Negroni. And like, we're going to, I'm going to, Quote unquote it. Actually, let's do Negroni Asterix. I got, I got ideas for this one. So the Negroni Asterix in here is going to be inspired by Tom Holland's appearance in uh, Uncharted, apparently a Netflix original series. Now, personally, I love me a Negroni. The, the Negroni to me is like a like the perfect batched cocktail. I mean, at least for me, it's it's sweet but it's also bitter. It's got a, a complexity, a, a nuance that depends on the gin that you use, but there's also like a familiarity with it. Like if you, I find that when I make my Negronis, it's usually always with Carpano Antica Sweet Vermouth, and it's always with Campari. I'd love to explore more bitter red, Amar, uh, bitter red aperitifs out there at some point in time, but the gin can sometimes change. Personally, I like it with a beef eater, and I like it so much that actually I've had this container of batched Negroni sitting on the bar top that I sip from every once in a while. It's not cold by any means now, but this is Negroni in a container. I assure you of that. And I will show you as I put it over top of some glass and we're gonna, it's probably a bit more diluted, but it, but it's my Negroni, right? And I've been told in, a, in, uh, in prior conversations that maybe I look a little bit like Tom Holland, maybe I act a little bit like Tom Holland. So the fact that it's my Negroni, 
means that it's A-OK -okay to me. So let me grab ourselves a glass. Let me put a big old cube inside of this. I'm going to pour a Negroni for me is a one ounce of gin, one ounce of sweet vermouth, and one ounce of Campari together. So we're going to pour three ounces of my little Negroni concentrate over top of an ice. Uh, and actually, maybe we want to do a little bit more of it because this has actually had dilution in it already. So we want it to be a little more powerful, perhaps. It's, it's kind of... We could do it better if we made it fresh, but it's my Negroni. My Negroni Asterix. My Negroni Asterix. Brad says, we do a lot of beef eater Negroni here. Yes, we do. That we do. So let's go grab, let's grab the cocktail angle. We'll swing it on over, over here. How's that looking? That's looking okay. You can get a little bit closer though. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There's not much, there's not much to be afraid of over here. Just alcohol. Um, but there's a lot of context that I'm sure other people have struggled with to be afraid of alcohol. And for that, you know what? I understand that. I totally, totally understand that. Let's go grab an ice cube. We'll grab a big old cube from our small old little freezer over here. And get things going. Pop an ice cube in there. Honestly, I'm not even going to measure out three ounces. I don't exactly know how many ounces that we have to have in here. But I will take my little sippy cup hat. There we go. Pop that that way. And uh, I will show you the power of the Negroni within. I'm just gonna wait for that for a little bit. Oh no, what are you doing? It needs more air, hold on, it needs more air. There we go, there we go. Ooh, I see that comment from Imi Chow. It looks like it's a recipe. Let's see what we got, let's see what we got. Ooh, I love that nice ice crack. My favorite part, my favorite part. All right, we need a, I feel like maybe we're getting a single ounce out of this. Actually, I have to try that, right? I have to measure this out. How much are we getting out of each of these little pores of ours? No, don't spill, don't spill, don't spill. Oh! All right, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's speed pouring, but a hell of a lot more difficult. Well, maybe it's just the angle. That's another ounce of it. There we go, go for that. We, we don't need, yeah, go for it. You've got it, buddy, you've got it. Amy Chow say it. Oh, uh, more than awesome says, I see celery bitters. I want it, I want it, I... Excuse me, sir. I want those Turkish tobacco bitters. But first what we'll do is we'll taste the Negroni as it stands right now. Let me take this recipe that Amy Chow has here and let me copy it over so that I do not forget what it is. I will read that in a moment. Let me pop that back over here. Yes, I got that. Cool. How's it so far? Lightly sweet. Oh, excellent bitterness. It's the, the part that I love about the Negroni. It is diluted. It's a very diluted, it's a very, it really hasn't had a chance to sit around for a little while. So actually, let me give this a bit of a stir. It needs to be chilled a bit. And then I'll sit there and continue to dilute for the rest of the stream. That's the important part about ice. You see, when you use ice, you add dilution. If you shake things, it's a little bit less, of, uh, less predictable of a dilution. If you put it in a stirring apparatus, you have more control over the dilution and the temperature of the drink. That's the key of the ice. Mm. The bitterness is a little more pronounced now. And the sweetness is just like, it's very light. It's very light sweetness. But I kind of want to know, if I were sitting in a bar with Tom Holland serving up Negronis to random women. I've never watched the show, so they're all random people to me as of right now. I didn't recognize the actress. And she was smoking a cigarette. How do we best emulate that? And I would think that these little Fee Brothers Turkish tobacco bitters, I have never tried this in a Negroni before. I literally have no idea what this is going to be like, but I know that these are pretty, this have a pretty powerful taste. So I'm just gonna kind of pop two dashes on top and see what happens. Maybe one more, just one more, just for funsies. I see Amy Chow saying, before Melfi's was a restaurant in Charleston. Oh, we'll get to that in a hot second. But the Melfi family owned a pharmacy on the property and their cost of a coat of arms still displayed in the restaurant today. Coat, not cost. I caught you there, no worries. Let me give this another quick spin again and then we'll go to that recipe and see if we've got what it takes. I definitely put the bar spoon in backwards, but that's all right. I love that I'm getting mileage out of this pink bar spoon. I keep putting this thing in my mouth. Should be cleaning it like this, that actually, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I'm a fan of that so far. Come here. Come here, you. Pop you up here. That's so subtle. 
oh my goodness, that's so subtle. And what's weird about the Fee Brothers Turkish Tobacco Bitters, it's really not, it's not super duper bitter. I think the Fee Brothers bitters on their own are actually quite sweet compared to some of the other bitters that I've had in the past. So what's weird is this Negroni that I'm experiencing here is it's first on the sweet, then on the bitter. There's a little bit of kind of cool area in between. And so the, the Turkish tobacco bitters has added another angle to the sweet, but also another angle to the bitter as well. It's just the slightest bit on the bitter notes. It's a little more smoky ever slightly so, it makes sense, tobacco, right? And on the sweet notes, it's a little more savory. But the savory to me exists on the forefront of the drink and the smokiness exists on the back, just like the sweet exists on the forefront and the bitter exists on the back. The mouth, the, the mouth feel that I get right now, it's, it's a little bit dry. It's very much that like, like tongue flicking dryness. And honestly, it's a little, there's a little bit there that tastes a little too almost artificial to me it kind of sticks around and i think that's probably because that negroni concentrate whatever you want to call it actually lack of concentrate has been sitting for a hot minute and uh you know these things these things have shelf lives especially when they're open to oxidation and stuff so i'm gonna take a while i guess and say that's probably the oxidation but i think that's totally in line with my negroni asterisk according to tom holland here uh you made the negroni it's the end of the night you've been sitting here all night you're smoking a cigarette now and you take a sip of that thing after putting that cigarette in your mouth yeah that's kind of what I would expect, to be honest. It's a Negroni nonetheless, and I'll take that. I'll take that very much so. Appreciate Kid Sandin's recommendation there. Also for that little, I guess, a little piece of pop culture that we can take home with us. That's great. Amy Chess says, the book recommended enjoying Dr. Melfi's Medicine, Prosciutto and Dates. When we return, there are so many more cocktails that I want to make for you all. Oh, absolutely. Now, Amy Chow, as you may recognize, with that little diamond, little VIP thing there, has been a guest at the bar with an ex before. Now, I will remind, just because we're not doing live streams doesn't mean that we're not doing content in general. I do have an Instagram account and I do have a YouTube and I do have a TikTok as well that stuff gets posted to eventually. One of the things that I want to kind of keep myself to is just kind of keeping up with the times, right? So the times seem to be ruled by the algorithm. And so the algorithm is something that I want to get intimately, intimately familiar with. So more than likely, depending on how often you are on social media and whether or not you are following or not, you'll see some different types of camera content or borrow the next content on those different social media outlets. If you want to keep track of this stuff and this is the kind of stuff that you're into, I would recommend going there. This isn't like a selfish plug or anything like that. I won't be here. So if this is the kind of stuff that you enjoy, you should pop on over there. Or if, if you like to just pal around in the company and stuff, you can hang on the Discord as well. We're active there as well. Where we, it's not even just my own content, it is everyone else's content as well. The With an X community extends just more than just beyond Cameron With an X himself. I assure you of there. In any case, so let's get into this recipe that we got from Imiche over here. I do have the chat message that is saved. I live at 123 Fake Street, Philadelphia, PA, 12345. That's pretty damn close, honestly. So the recipe that Amy Chow provided for us was Dr. Melfi's Medicine. It is half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters of Campari, half an ounce of beef eater gin, that 15 milliliters, half an ounce of sweet vermouth, that's like a, that's like a Negroni so far, lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, or half an ounce of chickpea water, but we don't have that, so we're gonna use the simple syrup instead. Half an ounce of egg white and a dash of celery bitters will do. Combine all those ingredients together, shake vigorously, double strain into a Collins glass, garnish with a fruit peel. So the thing that I see there is that chickpea water. And chickpea water actually is a kind of substitute for egg white. If you wanna go for like a, a vegan option there for your egg whites. Some of the, one of the things that I never got a chance to explore, at least here for now, are different egg white substitutes and things like aquafaba, the egg whites themselves, Thick egg whites, chickpea water. Chick I've seen videos of people taking the water out of the chickpea cans and they they put like a little milk frother to it. You know, like one of, one of um, where are you? One of these things. And it whips up like a meringue. And it's so cool looking. And I've never had a chance to play with that stuff before. But as we kind of, as I have the opportunity to dive deeper into cocktail mixology and cocktail culture, I want to be able to explore that stuff. So, stuff explore that stuff more deeply and obviously a more sustainable way than before but that sounds like it'll be fun so let me take that um I'll use my pinning powers we're gonna oh thank you for that brad i appreciate it all right let's get with it we have to do what we have to put everything together and shake it in a container so let's get ourselves a shaking apparatus let me see if i can do this cool the way that i usually do i did 
Oh! <laughs> and then I almost ruined it. I need to work on my cocktail flair, obviously, as well. It's a skill set that I'm currently working on. And we need a couple of different things here. We'll grab our Campari, our beef eater gin, our sweet vermouth, our lemon juice, simple syrup. Now, in the effort of trying to remain sustainable, and so I didn't buy a bunch of lemons and just not do anything with them, I've got one of those little containers. It's not fresh lemon juice, unfortunately, but it is juice nonetheless, and we have that. So let me go for it. I'll grab our sweet vermouth, which is going to be our Carpano Antica. I'll grab our lemon juice, which apparently is provided by uh, Whole Foods. And let me grab an egg white, or rather the egg itself. Now I do wind up enjoying eggs, so I'm cool with that stuff. I will actually utilize that properly. Let's get things going over here. I will... Ooh, I got a little bit of a, a fuzziness on this guy. It looks like it's a little bit of lemon from last time, or... <laughs> Silly little thing. Chill a little thing. Come over here. Let's watch the whole cocktail making process together. Go up here. We'll pop it down here a little bit. What do we got? Come on back a little bit. There we go. I think that's going to look just fine, he says. Just fine. I'm adjusting this over here so I can actually see what's going on. Perfect. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to add everything together into our little shaking apparatus. We're not going to do... I, I see here that we have to shake vigorously. It doesn't specifically say that I'm supposed to dry shake first, but because we're adding an egg white in here, we want that egg white to emulsify a little bit, which basically means it gets a little more creamy and adds a texture to the drink that is, you know, kind of what you're going for here. I'm going to dry shake it first, then we're going to add some ice. We're going to shake vigorously in both cases. Don't worry, I'm still going to shake vigorously in one way, shape, or form, and hopefully not ruin this beautiful vest that I'm wearing right here. Go with the double shake. What was that you said? It definitely needs to go to the dry cleaners. This has never seen the dry cleaners. It's actually my grandfather's. It's my grandfather's vest and suit and stuff. I don't know when he wore it, but probably when he was younger, I'm guessing. So let's see. Let's add everything to our apparatus. I'm going to add things to the small side because I feel like it just kind of makes things easier over here. Let's do it with that. And also, I see a little bit of... I don't know if the stream is stuttering or not, but it looks like it is. So let me close out a couple of different programs. How do I get here. the rest of the sugar out of here? How do I get the rest of the sugar out of what? Oh, hello. Anna's got a big old sugar stick. How do you get the rest of the sugar out of it? I ate it all. At the bottom? Do you want the stuff out of the bottom? It looks like it just did. Here, open your mouth. Did you get all that? No, there's nothing left. Chug, chug, chug the sugar. Want another sugar stick? Okay, I can't provide that for you. That's not a part of the ingredients list that I pinned once upon a time. Sugar stick. I don't want the sugar stick. Thank you so much for offering it, though. Guys, I have to go somewhere where they have sugar sticks again. <gasps> Hi, Anna's is bread. Hi, bread. We have uh, the. Oh, you're gonna. I feel like I'm gonna miss these little Anna moments. To be perfectly honest, for the sake of transparency, I get so flustered when she just pops on spontaneously. I'm just like, oh my god, the show's being derailed. But it's oh, so I wonderful. Oh, I keep forgetting I'm not supposed to do that. No, 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 nobody said you're not supposed to do that. It's wildly it encouraged. Sugar. It's wildly encouraged. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's not being derailed. There is no derailment here. This is like the last hurrah. We should derail. We love it when Anna's oh, here. Oh, cool. I want another sugar stick. I can't provide that for you right now. Would you like some Campari? No, ew. Ew, ew. We're gonna add a half an ounce of Campari as Anna flops her stick all over my face for just a brief moment here. It's beautiful yeah. and I love it very much. Please, harder, mommy. No. Oh yeah, see, that's what gets her to stop. I added too much Campari! Can I just stick it from the garbage? You can stick it wherever you want to, my love. Half an ounce, or about 50 milliliters of Campari. I realize that I should be adding the egg white first so I don't potentially screw things up over here. So let's do that next. And if I really had to sacrifice the Campari, and that, that's just how it be. I'm gonna grab my little yoker over here. My little yoker. Here we go. I'm gonna grab this guy. Can we see that? We can absolutely see that. Great. There's a chair in front of my screen over here, so. Welcome to the party, friend. I can't see who that friend is. Hold on. Garrett Matthews has popped in with a little bit of folly here. Welcome, Garrett. We're, oh, it's always a pleasure to have new people here. Now, unfortunately, I won't be back here next week or any foreseeable time afterwards, but he came in at the perfect time. Hopefully I don't screw up putting this egg white in here. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Oh no, oh no, here. Oh, oh, there goes the yolk. Oh, almost. All right, I caught it. To the bucket. To the bucket. Get in there. I would have loved to save that, but I was not able to. Did I get a lot of, I don't know if I got any. I got a little bit in there. Yeah, I think we're doing all right there. Party time indeed. Green drink. 
insert other expletive here. So I put an egg white in there. How much egg white? It just said, just said an egg white. It said half an ounce of egg white. This is all the best that we could do. I took one, I took the egg from one white. The egg from one white, the, the, uh, the white from one egg. And I think that's just fine. So next we need the other piece of our quasi, uh, quasi Negroni. We need some beef eater gin. And luckily for us, I've got exactly beef eater gin right here. So we'll add about a half an ounce or 15 milliliters of that to our constituent components here. And we'll move on. For the last piece of the, comp uh, for the last piece of the Negroni, which is going to be, um, oh, sweet vermouth. Oh, sweet vermouth, how you moved me so a little bit. Accidental flip. It wasn't an accident. It was totally on purpose. And I'm not going to break the bottle, I swear that. Flip the, the sweet vermouth. Oh, yeah, dude. Wow, that thing flied right off. This thing is kind of like a hammer in the sense that the center of mass is not where it's supposed to be. That could have ended horribly. Can we call that a flop? Oh, I get it. Flip, because it's a flip type cocktail. See, I don't catch on very easily. I'm a little dense, but we all... <laughs> If you're here, you probably already knew that. Half an ounce, about 15 milliliters of our sweet vermouth. We basically have a Negroni with egg white in it right now. We have a very fluffy Negroni as it stands right now, and that's kind of cool. Let me put this guy back in the fridge over here. Now, oh, hold on a second. There we go. Don't worry about the sounds. Now, did you know that the Negroni was made in the year 1919 or something like that, based off of Count Negroni and how he liked his Americanos with gin, not club soda? I learned that from a television show. Can't remember which one it was. Topical. As per tradition, are you going to destroy a Surface laptop this stream? The flips look like they're in preparation for that. Well, well, kid. <laughs> I'll show you a thing or two about destroying Surface laptops. And actually, technically, I haven't destroyed it. It's still functioning just fine. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. Next ingredient is we're going to add three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Now we would freshly squeeze these. However, um, the only lemon that I have accessible is actually in the freezer downstairs. And if, unless we wanted to wait here for the next couple of hours or so, or put it in a microwave, which I guess we could technically do, um, I'm just not willing to do that right now. So I'm going to use a little bit of lemon juice here to make things a little bit quicker. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. It's coming out very, very oddly, a little bit weird. So we got a little bit of our acid in there, right? Acid's gonna do something to that egg white. The egg white itself, if you didn't already know, is it has a basic pH. So by adding something that's acidic, we've naturally made things a little more neutral. That's one of the things that we tend to do. A lot of times, sours, drinks that are called sours, will add acid to the egg white to kind of even out the smoothness and even out the acidity, which is pretty cool. So right now, we've basically got a bit of a Negroni sour right now with the proper egg white. Um, and we just need a half an ounce of simple syrup left. And honestly, that's just kind of sweetening things up. This is, this from what I can tell, is kind of like a Negroni sour. But it's actually Dr. Melfi's medicine, which I completely forgot to write on the board, so let me do that real quick. I see Brad saying, I helped make a death flip and I survived. <laughs> yeah. Duh, it doesn't actually kill. Dr. Melfi's. Was it Dr. Melfi's? Dr. Melfi's medicine. 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 Dude, these... Ugh, these markers suck, dude. Medicine. Dude, that looks so much better. At Inichow. I forgot to write Kid Sandin's name up on here. My goodness, how wildly inconsistent I am. That's just how it be. All right, now we just need to add the half an ounce of the simple syrup. It could technically be any simple syrup. Whatever you want it to be. I have no idea what this drink is supposed to be, but I've never had it before. Uh, well, I guess I do kind of know what this drink is supposed to be, so I'm just gonna add some regular simple syrup, and we'll go from there. I see Brad popping in here with a, it looks like we have another recommendations. And it looks like it's, oh, it's yeah, gonna be fun. I like that one. That'll be the next one that we do. I'll pop that up right there. Add half an ounce of simple syrup, or about 15 milliliters or so. This is a very, very sugary simple syrup. It's a extremely rich simple syrup. It's so rich, in fact, that you can see the crystals that have just collected on the bottom of this thing. Wild, absolutely wild. All right, let's put that away. I have a little bit left of that. That's pretty good. Let's give this thing a dry shake first, and then we're gonna give it a wet shake. Put this jigger off to the side. Pop that over this guy. Now, because there's nothing 
there's no ice in here. It's not necessarily cold. We're gonna have a little bit of an inverse of pressure in here. Um, so we just have to hold this thing really tight and hope to goodness that we don't make a mess. So that's what we're gonna do. What I tend to do, actually, let me bring this back over here. With this particular shaker, what I like to do to keep the pressure is I'll, I'll find my shaker like this and I'll put my hand over top so I can kind of lock it in place with my thumb and my pinky as well. So that's, that's not necessary. That's as much grip that I'm going to be able to use with my right hand, which is my strongest hand. And when I grab from the other side, I'll kind of, I'll do like that. And it should be relatively st sturdy. Uh, so we don't break that seal because because we have the we don't have any ice on the inside the pressure is in the opposite direction so this thing wants to break apart right now and this kind of helps me helps it not do that and this is the most vig vigorous shake that i feel comfortable doing with something that could potentially explode all over my face so now that we've done that we'll kind of let that pressure release it was very easy to do so we'll add uh some ice to that and we'll give that a final shake the idea of doing the dry, oh, dry shake versus the wet shake is because we want to let that egg kind of that egg white kind of emulsify first uh which basically just kind of evens out the texture a little bit oh so you can tell it's a little it's a little frothy just a little bit frothy now i got a big cube in there too I'm gonna add a couple of little cubes as well. Here you go. Just because I want a little bit, I want a little more dilution there. So let's go with it. Pop it back on the top, give that a smack. I don't need to hold it as uh, dearly as I did previously because now physics is gonna do the work for me. Let's go for it. Feels good, man. Let's pop that. Let's gonna strain that what into a double strain into a Collins glass. Really? I think we want to put that into a little coupe glass, but the instructions say a Collins glass, uh, and that's gonna be pretty tall. Actually, let me do one of my smaller glasses here. I think I think this is gonna work out rather well. Let's pop things over here. Let's see what we got. Hello, tall tall thin glass with no name. Oh, they call you Collins. Well, that's cute. They call me Cameron sometimes. Sometimes they call me other names, but that's just wrong. It is not my name. Where we garnish that with? Do we have the garnish? Garnish with a fruit peel. I don't have any fruit peels. I'm gonna garnish with something completely different. Something that I've literally never had on the stream before because I only found it at the store a week ago. There we go. We'll double strain that, meaning I'm gonna put one Hawthorne strainer over top, and I'll use a fine mesh strainer here. Let's see how that goes. This was Dr. Melfi's medicine. I was gonna say, whatever the recipe calls for, there's honestly not a lot of liquid in here. I probably would have put this into a uh, into a coupe glass, but instructions say this, so that's what we're going to do, at least for now, until I feel like doing something different. I'm actually gonna go grab a coupe glass from down here. I think I just picked up a couple more or no, I did not, but we're going to use this anyways. Let's see if this bears a little bit better in a coupe glass. That foamy head that you see there, I don't know if that's going to survive the journey. Let's see though. We'll put that a little closer too. Let's see. Will it survive the journey? Oh, that is so pretty looking. Oh, you got to see that from my angle. Take a look at this a little bit from the top. I love that. It had a really cool swirl action going on there. Let me see, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. Because I don't actually have the orange peel or any sort of citrus peel, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna do something that I honestly probably could have done in the past, but haven't done before because I miss y'all very, I'm gonna miss y'all very much. We're gonna add, instead of a fruit peel, oh wait, we have the celery bitters, right? We have the celery bitters. I almost forgot, I almost forgotten. Let's take the celery bitters we're gonna put it right up on top. And I'm not sure exactly if that's going to produce a very noticeable color, but if it does, we're gonna do something cool with it. Let's add a dash, a dash. Whoa, wow, look at that. Wow. That is totally doing something. Let me make that angle a little more, a little more cool. There we go. Now we can see stuff happening there. Ooh. 
It has such a nice smell to it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little toothpick. I'm trying not to stab myself on one of them. There we go. And I'm just merely gonna, I don't know if this is gonna work out super well with the celery bitters, but we're gonna try. I'm just gonna try to draw a little bit with it. Maybe we can make a little X. Let's make it a little more spiky. Something that reminds us of medicine, right? I'm not much of an artist when it comes to latte foam art. Let's do something like that. <laughs> well, we tried our best just over here. And that's all we can really ask for. When we're all learning, we're all learning together. Now let's do the other piece that I'm just really excited to try. I've got these edible flowers that I bought at the store that I've literally never had access to before. I've never been able to find edible flowers at the store, and I did. And I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be so cool if it works out. I love the little, I love the color that we have on here, and it reminds me a lot of this little pink flower here. So I'm just gonna very gently, maybe this floats, maybe it doesn't. Do you float? There we go. Look at you. Wow, look at you. Aww. Look at that. Let me adjust this a little bit. It's so pretty. Now that, that's the kind of medicine that I'm into. That is so beautiful. That's so cute. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Does it taste terrible? I have no idea. Dude, look at that for a second as I clean things up a little bit over here. Oh, that's so pretty. I love that so much. Pop you down here, get you guys prepared for another shaking cocktail, if possible. Wow, I love that. Somebody take a picture of that. I plan on taking a picture anyway, so you don't actually have to, but if you do, it'll be appreciated. All right, we'll put things over here for now. Very good. That is so pretty looking. Wow, I love that. Let me take a picture with my stuff. Honestly, I haven't... Ooh, I forgot I was supposed to be taking pictures for the cocktail blog. Thank dearest. Oh, thank both of you guys. Y'all did it. Y'all are real MVPs. Look at you. Oh, you're so pretty. Is it very medicine-like? Not really, but hey. Hey, we got it. Also, let me take a video photos of the other guys, which I completely forgot to do. Hello, buddy. You were a Negroni. Let's pop you out of the way. You were... Whatever Anna wanted to make. And a little purple, a little purple, purple G and T. Purple P P P P P P P P B P F T N T. That's what that was. I took all those pictures and stuff. Now, another question you may have with the with the whole hiatus coming up is what about the cocktail blog? Like, what's gonna happen to the cocktail blog? Honestly, I'm not so sure what happens with the cocktail blog. I think the cocktail blog is gonna become something a little bit different. Instead of being a kind of recollection of what we covered on stream before, it's gonna be a recollection of like, whatever my most recent like advances in cocktail mixology is going to be. So one of the things that I hope to try to do is dive deeper into some of the concepts that I was only able to very briefly explore at the bar of the next at its current level here. Things like fat washing, things like flips, Things like potentially like molecular gastronomy or fancy other words that pop into the future. Some of the tools that I never actually got to use. I have a cocktail smoking kit that I never actually used during these shows. But these are some things that I really want to dive deeply into, perhaps in the time that I make where with other stuff of content and stuff that pops up. So what will likely happen is if I explore a certain concept and stuff and be able to make a couple of videos and stuff about it, I'll probably pop into the cocktail blog with a bit of a summary, just like I had been doing previously, and links to some of the videos that actually explore that concept because it's not like there was a stream that you can go back and watch to be able to reference that type of content again like the kind of idea here is honestly this little community that we have here is so lovely and i love the little like kind of cohort that we develop here but i want i want so much more out of it right and there's, there's i feel like there's nothing wrong with always wanting to let a little bit more to want to grow to the next level or so and this little thing that we got here is awesome and i like to keep like i feel like instead of it being like a, a television show that got reboot after reboot after reboot after reboot and just never had a chance to quote unquote die. We're not killing things off here. It's not what I'm trying to apply. But the next level will be something a little bit different. And for that, this little this little like blip in time that we have here, I want to be able to preserve in the way that we are now. But in any case, Dr. Melfi's medicine. It looks so damn cute, but what does it taste like? Ooh, those celery bitters right off the nose. It's not the, it's not the flower. I swear it's not the flower. But the... 
the celery notes there actually do kind of make it smell like medicine a little bit. There is a piece of this that smells like, um, um, there is a, oh, hold on. There's like, I want to say there was bug spray that I put on my body during a camping trip one year that smelled almost exactly the way that this smells now. It smells like, it's almost citronella-like. It smells like, 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 uh, not poison sumac, but like, Something to treat poison ivy. Neosporin or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Deets, maybe. I don't even know. Like, it, that's got that sort of, like, a keep the bugs away from me type smell to it in a chemical kind of way. But it's not, like, unpleasant. Like, it's good in a way. I see Amy Chow popping in and saying, we love you and please take care of yourself and take your time. The celery was me trying to make up for not having aquafaba. I'm sorry. No, this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. It's chat's choice. It's the celebration of all of us together in this little community while we still have it available to us. And that's great. So listen to me and don't run away. This drink tastes like DT. DT. DT? DT? Yeah, don't run away from here. We haven't even tasted it yet. Come on, just stick around for the ending. Oh, that's so nice. That's like an oddly well-balanced drink. That's like an oddly bad. That's really good. So I love the bittersweet component of a Negroni. And I, I was always short. Sure. Actually, I had an entire stream potentially planned of all different variants on a Negroni. I just couldn't get my hands on enough infused Campari and it would have completely broken the bank. But this is like, it's a, it's a sour, dry, Negroni. It's like a dry Negroni sour. It's a Negroni sour. That's what that is. But it's a little, it's a little extra. Mmm. It's a little extra. Mm. Let me try to pin down exactly what that extra mmm was. Mmm. It's just like, there is this interesting, it's almost tastes like lemonade. It tastes like bitter lemonade. Dry, bitter lemonade. And actually, I'm getting a flashback to literally earlier this week. We were off to a friend's place. It was over the weekend. And we walked down the street. And right on the corner were these two two, uh, two children selling lemonade for a dollar per cup. And I was like, I will take two cups. And I gave them $5 and let them keep the change. It was going to one of the free local libraries around here. I completely appreciate and support things like that. But that lemonade was probably the best damn lemonade I've had in a hot minute. Better than anything I'd brought from the store. But anything, better than anything I've made for myself. It was balanced. It was sweet, but it was also slightly tangy. It was it was not super diluted. It tasted like the lemon. It didn't taste fake. It didn't taste like it was trying to trick you or anything. It was honest to God, good lemonade. And this kind of tastes like that mixed with bitter Campari, the way the adults like it, with a little bit of dry component there from the egg white that adds that different type of texture there. That's really good. Imichel, where did you get that recipe from? That's good. I mean, you part of it came from you, but like, dude, dude. That's why she gets to be a bar with the next guest every once in a while because evidently she knows what's up. That's really, really good. Oh, I can't see. Uh, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, let me. Ah, there we go. When bar 2.0 is around, I will help you source infused Campari. This sounds amazing because now I kind of want to get a bottle of Campari and, and throw either a bunch of peppercorn or jalapenos in it to infuse it. I have always wanted to do espresso infused Campari because one time I saw it in the menu at a bar that I was at and I got the Negroni that was supposed to be espresso infused and it wasn't actually espresso infused and I sent it and I was like, I don't really like this because it wasn't espresso infused and they took it off the bill and I felt really good about it, but I also felt kind of pretentious. In any case, I haven't put coffee in my Campari but I want to, in any case. Garrett's saying, I like deet, it's almost as good as gasoline. Child labor tastes just so damn sweet, says kid. That little tandem duo there. Yes, except the lemonade didn't taste like gasoline. And I have tasted some things that taste the way that gasoline kind of smells, <clears throat> malort, but it's not all bad. There's a book called Cookies and Cocktails. That's very good info. So that's, that's Cookies and Cocktails. I'm gonna write that down for myself so that I don't forget. That was, Dr. Melfi's, Dr. Melfi's medicine. Hold on, this is for my notes after the fact. Dr. Melfi's medicine. Cocktails and cookies? Cookies and cocktails. Cookies and cocktails at Ninja. Thank you for that. In any case, 
That was pretty good. How about we have another? I saw a message from Brad, AKA more than awesome, MTA himself, giving a recipe that utilized, I believe it was chartreuse. Did I read that correctly? I'm down for using some more chartreuse. Now, if y'all can recall, our friend Brad, AKA more than awesome, actually came here as a guest to the bar with an X. His signature is in this book for the chartreuse stream that we did. The two bottles of chartreuse, both green and yellow, that we actually have here at the bar with an X is solely, it's Brad is solely responsible for those bottles. He took the journey, he allowed for transportation to be able to get those bottles into our possession, and we use them well. And honestly, there was a piece of me that feels almost a little bit bad that the bar with an X is not continuing the way that it is now because of the kindness that some people have, the time that people have given, the things that people have given to the bar. But the thing is, again, I see it, but I put it this way, it'll exist in another form. It's not going away. This whole stuff isn't going away. This bar will still be used, but just in a different way in the future. So let's find that recipe. I am slowly trying to figure out how to make you burn through all that green. Oh my goodness. So I see that the recipe was one and a half ounce of the gin, one ounce of sweet vermouth, three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse, two dashes of orange bitters, garnish, one maraschino cherry. Optional, it seems. I am going to take a guess that maybe we're going to either shake this one or maybe we're going to stir this. I would think that because... Ooh, excuse me, because it feels just a little bit kind of a, a riff on the Negroni, I'm going to stir this one. I think that's going to be good. Oh, this is a bijou. Bijou. Boy, I have a recipe for that. Hold up a second. Bijou. 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 Bijou, bijou, bijou. That's the gin, the chartreuse, the sweet vermouth, the orange bitters, the maraschino cherries. We're going to put that all together into a mixing glass, and that's what we're going to do. This is called a bijou or bijou or bijou. I don't know. It's whatever we want it to be. And that was recommended by our pal, Brad. Bijou. I spelled it wrong. Let's get on with it, dog. Bijou, bijou, bijou. I will brunch this drink if I am feeling fancy. Bijou, I think, maybe. I'll bijou, bijou, bijou. I'll take it. Let's grab ourselves a mixing apparatus. I have one over here. We're gonna grab ourselves a big old cube and such. Plop that into our mixing glass and see what happens afterwards. I assure you, it's not quite magic. It is just science in drinkable form. You can also smell it, you can taste it, you can do whatever you want with this, really. You can technically absorb alcohol in certain orifices of your body. We're not gonna, that's a, that's a topic for another day's adventure. Not this one. I don't think Twitch is TOSL for stuff like that. Let's bring the cocktail angle over so we can actually see what's going on over here. Hello, buddy. Hello, buddy. Let's watch as this thing gets made. All right, let's go for it. So what we're gonna need in our glass is one and a half ounces of gin. What kind of gin are we thinking about here? Honestly, we're feeling fancy, right? We're feeling fancy. I'm feeling fancy. One of the problems that I have is hoarding and I hoard bottles that I have a weird attachment to. So we're gonna go with the botanist gin here. I have an attachment to this bottle because it was a gift and I know that it's expensive. And I know that green chartreuse is also getting uh, expensive in this day and age. So we're just gonna go with it. <laughs> that feels like a bar with an X 3.0 idea. Yeah, where we're shoving alcohol up our anuses. Wild. That's when the bar with an X becomes the bar with three X's. In any case, let's take one and a half ounces of this gin of ours, which I'm sure I have enough of. Oh, actually, that is a very lemon juicy full uh, measuring majigger. Let's use this one instead. One and a half ounces of the good gin. The botanist is an Isla, Isla dry gin. It is a dry gin from the Isla Isla, from I believe it's, it's I think it's Scotland or Ireland. I need to remember. That's pretty much almost the entire thing there. Let's see. This is from Island of Isla. That's where it is. Scotland. That's the one. Let's see. How much do we have left in there? There's such a little bit. Actually, you know what? That'll be that'll be saved for me. That'll be saved for me in celebration, perhaps. One and a half ounces, or about 44 milliliters, of our Isle Isle Dry Gin, the botanist in this case. I love me some botanist, it's good stuff. Now let's add one ounce of our sweet vermouth. I feel that if we're going to go to the top of the line that we have accessible to us here at the bar, we're going to go with the Carpata, Carpatano, Carpatano Antiqua Formulala. Carpano Antica. 
We'll go with a full ounce of that, or about 30 milliliters for our friends across the pond. If you're hailing from the Isla Isla, dude, say something. I want to know. Full ounce of that. Now, instead of continuing with the rest of this kind of Negroni-esque recipe, we're going to swap things out for a little bit of chartreuse instead. Now that, let's see, I gotta go back up a little bit because I, I, I've, uh, I didn't memorize those proportions. Three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse. Let me pin that again for a little while. I'd forgotten about it. We'll snooze after 20 minutes. Yeah, that makes sense. Go back down. Go back down. I did find Conniption American last weekend, which is great and less cardamom y than the purple. Oh, that's good. Yeah, actually, I, uh, I followed the uh, Dirty Distillery's uh, YouTube channel and they have a whole video series on the conniption gin and i was like that's weird why isn't it purple and they're like because conniption gin it's the kinship that's purple there are other different types of conniption gin as, gins as well so now what we're gonna need is three quarters of an ounce of our green chartreuse it's great one of the things that i want to reiterate about the things that's so wonderful at least what the bar with the next means to me at this iteration is that this stream has done wonders for my social life like let me tell you i have reconnected with people that i hadn't spoken to in years people i haven't hung out with since my my since my um my high school days or even before then i have been able to connect with people far flung and wider because of these shows it's so cool what the powers of the internet can do if used in the right way and if we have a desire to meet and hang out with people that are just cool in the world, people that are unique in their own special way, you're bound to be in for quite a few number of adventures if you just open your mind a little bit, which is something that I was inspired personally by our buddy Brad out there. So let's see, we got our three quarters of an ounce of the chartreuse, two dashes of orange bitters. We're gonna pop it all up on top with our orange bitters. I, for one, think that I'm gonna go for the bitter truth orange bitters in this case, because a bitter truth orange bitters, in my opinion, are a little more on the bitter side than they are on the orange side. And that's kind of what I'm looking for in here. I like those bitter components. And so that's what we're gonna go with. Let's add one, two big full dashes of our bitter truth orange bitters to our cocktail shaker. Let me also give my measuring magic a little bit of a clean over here because, well, I don't wanna, we're running low on measuring apparatus. Now all we gotta do is, I think we added everything there. Yep, indeed. So now we're just gonna give this a stir. I'm gonna use this silver one over here. And then we're gonna strain that into, it looks like a coupe glass. Do we see a chilled coupe glass? Coupe or martini glass. We could do whatever we want to, really. I'll grab one of those, I assure you. This is called a bijou. This is a cocktail actually I've been wanting to try for a hot minute. So I appreciate Brad for popping in here and making that as the chat request. This is great. Basically all we're doing here is we're just stirring this until the desired dilution is acquired. What that desired dilution is, I'm not exactly sure. I tend to just kind of stir until the sides of the glass start to chill a little bit and it is getting a little cloudy. And at that point, I'm gonna give it a stop. Oh, that's so, Ooh, I can taste the green chartreuse. Let's grab a different coupe glass, shall we? How about we do this guy over here? Pop him on like this. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little julep strainer, which I actually left downstairs. I didn't have the julep strainer on me. That's okay. I have this bar spoon that I can use to prevent the ice from going anywhere. Let's just do that. Bijou, 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 bijou. Nice. Now we'll grab ourselves if it says we can optionally add a maraschino cherry, then we might as well optionally add a maraschino cherry. I have these maraschino cherries that I got from a friend of mine. And that friend of mine uh, specifically made these maraschino cherries and put them in moonshine. So this is another contribution to the bar with an X from a couple of friends that we know from the better parts of Pennsylvania. And uh, actually we visited them the other day. We're greatly appreciated for them in our lives. It's very, very, it's alcoholic. Actually, let me... Oh yeah, those are damn good maraschino cherries. Let's pop you in there. With just, just the slightest bit of that juice to float. Or rather, sink to the bottom. I have pretty much decided that Gen it says more than awesome that Genevieve Genepi is my new green since I almost can't find anything else anywhere else. But I have a heavy pour of the Genepi. It was interesting. I was just watching a video the other day where somebody did. It was a chartreuse type drink, but they used a different one. I think it was something something bruto. 
Something Bruto, I believe, was the brand of green botanical liqueur that they used in the drink that they were making. Um, there's just so many different substitutes for, uh, for juice out there. And I have not tried any of them, but maybe one day I will. So this is our bijou, our bijou. Now that I, that technically that, that maraschino cherry could be on a cocktail skewer. Do I have anything worth skewering with? I definitely do at some point. Where are we? What's, a, what's a, an accessible skewer? Here's an accessible skewer. I only have like one good skewer. Come here, you. It's from Maggiano's here in Philadelphia. There we go. I stabbed it. I stabbed it good. All right, get back out of here. Let's take that pinned comment and put it away. I can unpin that message. There we go. Faccia bruto. Faccia bruto. That's the one. I also, we don't have that here because ABC state. I also like that this is a gin heavy stream. So far it is. Well, that's what the people want. The people will receive. And uh, that's just kind of the thing today. Also that, that, uh, <laughs> that cherry wants to float to the top. Get out of here, cocktail angle. Let me take a picture of this butte. I'm going to try to like, uh, frame it in such a way. <laughs> I'm kind of cheating over here. Here's our bijou. Bijou, 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 Now, naturally, these photos here, although they might be a little delayed because of this whole hiatus thing that I'm holding myself to, they will eventually be go to the cocktail blog eventually. I can assure you of that. This chat's choice will live forever on that Discord server that we love so much. This smells so heavily of the chartreuse, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm really, really loving it here. Oh, that is so weird. That is so weird in the coolest of ways. Wow. So, for me, the bitterness of Campari. Got a, oh, not Campari. What am I talking about? This is not Campari. It's the sweet vermouth that I'm getting. I was getting that confused with the whole, uh, ver, um, what do you call it? It's called a Negroni. You should have known this. That Negroni thing. The sweet vermouth is pairing super well with that green chartreuse. The sweet vermouth to me can be a little bit vinegary at times. It's got a powerful like fruit cherry component to it. And ultimately it's savory in a way. Chartreuse to me is also bitter. It's kind of a nice forward. It's also kind of savory. I'm getting looks of like peppercorn and stuff now. And it's so botanical and it's so spice forward in a nice piquant way that I really like. But also it's like, it's well sweetened. It's it's sweet in the way that the Negroni is sweet. Like if you're if you're not a big cocktail person, then this probably doesn't taste very sweet to you. But if you're into like very short drinks, this does have a very sweet component to it. My palate has actually completely transformed from here versus a year or even two years ago before I could even like sip whiskey out of the sip whiskey out of the glass or sip whiskey out of the bottle, which I'm trying to get a better feel for as my palate grows and expands and I can identify the flavors that lie beneath the drinks that everyone so know and loves today. And uh, I'm definitely getting a little more egotistical in the process. It's nice to be able to say, that's not the way I make my Manhattans. I don't make many Manhattans. I make a lot of Negronis. And I know what I like my Negronis to be. Um, this is... I like that. The chartreuse just offers such a nice, it's such a nice balanced, like that anise note there, it's like a sweet anise. Not super off-putting, like sometimes it can be. Sometimes it can be really overpowering, at least for my palate. In this case, it's nice and it's balanced too. Also, there's a little bit of that kind of moonshiny booziness from that maraschino juice, which I bet if I stir this up a little bit, we'll get a little bit more of. Brad says, it's a real fun Negroni rift, and that's why I drink Chinar Negronis, because you can absolutely find Chinar here. Also, a lot of botanicals is enhanced by the botanist, which the botanist gin is a very botanical botanist, a very botanical gin, as opposed to, let's say, like a beef eater. I think it's still dry, so it still kind of occupies that similar category, but I believe there's, there was a certain number of, maybe it says it on the bottle, different botanicals that go into the Isla Dry in this case. 22. Forged Island Botanicals distilled from 100% grain neutral spirit. So there's 22 of them in there. I don't know how many exist in other gins out there. This just adds that extra complexity to it we know and love. It's why yellow, oh, a lot of the botanicals hands, but the bottom is also green and antica are kind of sweet. It's why yellow is all sugar to me, to Brad that is. Next time you're here, we'll crawl all the ABC stores to find the Chinar bottles. That's the thing. I think Chinar is available 
here because I have seen Chinar in bars around Philadelphia. I just couldn't seem to find it in my liquor store. Maybe it's because people are aware that it goes really, really well in certain drinks. I think, what, what's the drink that Chinar is really known for going into? There's one in particular that I tried to make a while ago and I just couldn't find. I can't remember what it was. I would like Chinar. That's the artichoke one. I'm sure I would. It's a little more sweet now, actually, with that um, with that cherry that I just mixed around in it. That's good. Mmm. <laughs> it's excellently boozy. Oh my god. Oh, I love that cherry. Thank you, Annie and Lil Abe, for those cherries. An excellent contribution. And thank you to Brad for the green chartreuse. Let's see, who else has also given things? Amy Chow has brought a number of spirits and a lot of fun to the stream. My bro Lycos Lore, who also produces content, has popped on the stream multiple times. I remember fondly the mocktail stream. My dearest, the Disney Queen, who's popped on here multiple times as well, and who remains to be a very, very positive and encouraging force in my life, who I, who I would not trade for literally anybody else. It's absolutely delightful. Who is Lycos Lore? Consider checking out Lycos Lore, who was last seen playing. Actually, he's streaming on YouTube now. He's moved on. He's moved on since the little place that we have here. And it's weird too, actually, that note on the how the shout out command doesn't actually shout out Lycos Lore is because for some reason, Twitch doesn't allow certain users, even if they are mods, because the chatbot with an X is a mod, to you do that little shout out thing. And that's a limitation on Twitch's part. I got I got beef with Twitch, honestly. So I think one of my it wasn't a really hard decision to be like, uh Maybe we stop. Is it like, is it is it a problem that we're not streaming on Twitch right now? Like, nah, it really wasn't a hard decision. Twitch is just Twitch is going through, I think, a, a formative years, a couple of formative years right now, and it's just kind of a weird place to be on. There are ins and outs of how this platform work, and it works off of the platform, which feels kind of weird. It's very hard to get discovered on Twitch. I would say that's. I think the the one main thing that I would have is having been on Twitch for like two years now and found a niche that I like to occupy. It's really difficult to find an audience. It's kind of kind of weird. I found a weird Long Island iced tea, if you're willing to try, says Imi Chow. Anyway, like us lore is great. Like us is so cool. We do have to do another cocktail. We have to move on. We're rounding around the two hour mark here. So what I kind of want to do is, I want to keep this short and sweet. So let's do one more, let's do one more cocktail. Let's do one more cocktail. If anybody wants to give their suggestions now, depending on how many suggestions there are, we'll roll a die for it. We'll pick at random which one that we're going to do. Um, I'll give everybody just a little bit just a little bit to kind of check that out and stuff. Yeah, go watch Lycos. The latest Skyrim modded stream. That movie's been doing great. Not a stream, but a bod. But he was streaming today. It's so great. I think Lycos Lore has been an awesome force in my life too. He's been like my best. He's been like one of my best friends since like the high school days. So big shout out to that guy. Go go forth and do all that stuff. Let me do. I guess I don't really need a lot of cleanup over here because more or less everything is put away. I just need to erase the one over here. We will do. One more cocktail before the bar with the next closes for a hot minute. I'll bow out then to give someone else a chance. Oh, oh, anybody, anybody who wants to. Peace goes sour, says Garrett. That's what we'll do. I like that. That's one of them. That's one of them. Who else has got ideas? Peace goes sour. Is like, we have done, I think we've done a peace goes sour on stream before. So if anybody has new ideas, I'm going to prioritize anything that I know that we haven't done. However, I will say, as we talk about a peace goes sour, I'm going to pull out the bottle of Pisco that I think has only made an appearance once around here. This bottle of Barsol, which is the Pisco that I use, is the only one that I could really... Actually, this was a gift from Imi Chow. This is from Imi Chow, I believe. Long Island Iced Tea, I see Imi Chow's idea. Let's do Pisco things. Is there a Pisco Long Island Iced Tea? A Long Island Iced Tea that features brandy of sorts. The Pisco brandy in this case. I like the idea of that. Let's build... How about we build this? Let's just build it like that. We see, we see Pisco so far. Let's do with Pisco. What else do we have here? Oh, Brad. Brad. This is not the, the sub to Garrett. That's what you get. That's what you get for contributing, Garrett. Good for you, sir. Good for you. And also, Brad's just a really generous guy. So let's see. Let's, let's do something fun. Chat's going to choose the entire drink itself, right? So we have Pisco so far. What should we add to the Pisco? I heard Pisco sour. I'm inclined we could add a little bit of lemon juice in there. I saw Long Island iced tea. Long Island iced tea has a shit ton of other components to it, including but not limited to, so you got your tequila in there. You got your gin in there. You got your other stuff in there. Whatever you have. Long Island iced teas are just 
wild, you know? Just wild in their own very, very special way. So what other ingredients do we have? It seems to be a very gin-heavy stream so far, so I'm just gonna put out there that there's gonna be no gin in this one. No gin at all. Just our pisco. Our balsa, barsal pisco. In the meantime, I'll pull up my own recipe book over here and see what we have pisco-wise. I do have a number of recipes for pisco around here somewhere. There is a pisco sour, the chilcano, the cocktail algeria circa 1960 apparently, and the fairy flower from one of my books around here. Oh man, I don't like that there's a pisco, there's a pisco bijou? No way. I don't like that. Don't like that one. Let's see, some of the ones that I'm getting over here is I see one, something called a chilcano, which uses pisco, lime juice, angostura, and ginger ale. I see it's a Peruvian, a Pisco, the hive uses Barsal, Mosta Verde Italia, one ounce of yellow chartreuse, Lille Blanc, and an orange peel. I don't have any Lille Blanc, unfortunately. We could sub that out, for example, with something else. I, I remember we could use like a, a dry vermouth in place of the Lille Blanc. It's not quite the same. It occupies a slightly different like kind of area. Lille Blanc, I believe, is also a type of kind of specialized wine that you would use, almost like a vermouth, for example. Not quite a Blanco vermouth, something a little bit different. But I do kind of like that idea. A Peruvian. It allows us to use that chartreuse. It allows us to use that pisco. A little bit of that orange peel. I don't have the orange peel, so we're just going to sub some orange bitters in there. You know what? We're going to make it work. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do a modified Peruvian, unless anybody has other ideas. This is your last chance. Peruvian. Last call. We're going for it. We're basically going to do that, right? I'm not a Pisco boy. Also, the yellow is my favorite, and I don't have a good local substitute. This is what we'll go with. We'll go with our Pisco. We're going to grab our yellow chartreuse from back behind the green chartreuse. And then, what else do we got there? We'll pin that comment. We gotta get our Lille, Lille Blanc. It's a simple one. I like that. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be very nice indeed. Pisco, yellow chartreuse, Lille Blanc. Look how much yellow has. Dude, there's so much of the yellow. Relatively speaking, relatively speaking. Let me grab my orange bitters. I guess we'll go with an Angostura this time. Just to kinda, I think the, I, I would think that the or the Angostura orange bitters is more akin to the orange peel than the Bitter Truth orange bitters are. I think this is a little more sweet than the Bitter Truth orange bitters. The Bitter Truth orange bitters actually, I think, provided another oomph to the bitter components of this, ooh, what was this thing called? Bijou. No. Yeah, I think that was what was going on there. Look at how much yellow. Look at all this stuff. Be jealous. Be jealous, my friends. And I'm inclined to think that we're going to stir this one as well, the Peruvian one here. And if I'm wrong on that, well, we're just gonna go with it. Let me clean up my mixing glass. I had two mixing glasses and apparently forgot to do the dishes, so here we are. There we go. We're ready for another one. We're ready for another one. I see you replace the Lille Blanc with Noily Pratt and see how it goes. I'll take it. Let's do that. Let's put everything behind. And we'll see how this thing goes. We've got our mixing apparatus. Let's get ourselves a large cube. We'll grab some Noily Pratt while we're at it. I was gonna say, Imi Chow, I was so impressed with you for a moment for picking one of the vermouths that we actually have in the collection. And then I remembered I posted the inventory. <laughs> it was like, that actually kind of helps in some cases, who knew? I am definitely checking in every port in France to see if I can get chartreuse <laughs> for the Bijou. I see, yeah, that was that's where we were at. All right, cool. So let's do this. We got two ounces of our Pisco, specifically our Barsal Pisco in this case. Pisco is a type of brandy. Uh, and honestly, I don't have many tasting notes on how that brandy be. So let's let's give it a little bit of a taste to, to kind of re enlighten my palate. Ooh. It reminds me... Okay, so if anybody's ever had Kirschwasser before, Kirschwasser, it's kind of like an alcoholic, like a very, like a diluted alcoholic cherry pit. I would say that the Pisco, on the other hand, kind of tastes very, very similar, but it's more like a table grape. Almost like a, not, not quite a Concord, like Welch's grape, but more like one of those green grapes that you get around like, I don't know, the store, I suppose. We're gonna add two full ounces or about 59 milliliters of our Barsal Pisco to our mixing glass as the base for this drink. Next, we're going to add Ooh, what was next? He looks up at the screen up there. 
a full ounce of our yellow chartreuse. Our yellow chartreuse is making an appearance over here and everybody's jealous about it. I'll take it. I can only be so much of a bully with my power, says more than awesome. Imichao says, yeah, did I tell you I went to four liquor stores looking for Pisco? I remember that. I remember that. You were, I remember that was for, I think it was the, I think it was for the Fizzes and Flip stream, which Imichao was a part of, and it was specifically to try to find the Pisco. I was like, if you can find Pisco, that would be so cool. Don't strain yourself for it. And this woman went the extra mile to all those different liquor stores to bring that beautiful Pisco to us. And it is the only bottle we have and we will cherish it for as long as we live. And I hope that there's more Pisco stuff that we can explore in the future. I'll just add a little reminder out there that for everybody who's here currently uh, and who may have missed the memo. So the bar with an X is, the, the, so the, the suggest command, the little exclamation point there will actually send a message directly to my Discord like my personal messages to make sure that I know what request that you're putting in. It will not be covered during this stream, but it may be covered in a video or something in the future. It gives me ideas for what the people want to see. And so you can use that now while the live stream is happening, but while the live stream is not happening, that command is not going to work. So instead there's a suggestions channel on the Discord which you can put things in. You can also reach me on Instagram via DMs. You can reach me on TikTok via DMs. You can reach me on Discord via DMs. I want to be as open as possible to be able to continue making this type of content and to be able to explore the craft mixology world so with that in, in mind there is an open door policy as it pertains to cocktails and stuff literally message me about whatever you want to i don't even care it doesn't even have to be mixology i have a friend of mine who we talk I, actually dark techie i don't know if he's still around but we we talk about ender um uh printing on the ender, ender printers and stuff it's a it's a funnel time now we also need a quarter of an ounce of our Lille Blanc. It's not really our Lille Blanc. We're to use the Norley Pratt instead. In this case, we're to do a little bit of a substitution there because I don't have any Lille Blanc. Excuse me. Amy Chow's a total goat. Uh, duh. Also, Brad says, I checked both bottles when I landed in Philly, and if one got broken, I was going to be like, oops, sorry, forgot to empty my water bottle so TSA wouldn't let me fly. I love how you had, you had, um, let's see, you had a script to save face just in case, just in case. That's okay. I believe you. You're a trustworthy guy. I mean, I know that I know that you're a trustworthy guy now, let's say a couple of months after meeting you for the first time and spending uh, a portion of my life uh, with you in my abode. So that actually makes kind of sense. I did have an exit strategy. We gotta have an exit strategy. Cocktail strand based on the giant. The giant? Or would have been oh, a cocktail strand based on the giant. I see, I see what you mean there. This is a beautifully green cocktail. Nice. All right, so that's all we have in here. And it says we're supposed to do a little orange peel on that too. I think that probably gets expressed over the top, not into the actual mixing glass. So let's go for it. Let's use the mighty trident to mix this guy up. And there's definitely another version of a coupe glass around here somewhere. We'll give that a little bit of a stir until it seems to be getting chilled. We'll move some. You guys are super cool too, says Imichel. Uh, duh, right back at you, girl. Right back at you. This looks nice and chilled. I'm feeling very good about it. I'm feeling rather warm usually all the time. I'm a very warm boy. Just kidding, I feel cold all the time. I don't even know why I lied to you guys. I totally, we'll definitely fly back up for the reopening of the bar with the next in a few months, for sure. It'll be a grand reopening. Uh, one of the things actually, or just to, like, to crash a TikTok. Actually, so one of the things that I wanna, um, that I wanna share is another thing that I'm doing on the Discord now is I opened up a content creation channel. And so, actually, we're gonna put this in a chilled glass. Let me go into my freezer. There's one chilled glass in there. Here we go, here we go, here, here we go again. It's not broken glass either. Hold on there, doggy. So one of the, uh, the channels that I've opened up in the Discord server is a content creation channel. One of the things that I want to commit myself to is to do a bit of research of exactly what makes certain types of content tick. If I'm trying to grow, then naturally we need a strategy in order to get to that point. And so I have been watching a lot of videos about entrepreneurship and leads and marketing and stuff that are to kind of prepare me for planning out the next co the content strategy that is going to remain sustainable. And I want to be really, really open with that for all of y'all. So if you guys are content creators and this is something that you think that you might benefit of, I want to encourage you to join the Discord server and join the conversation. A lot of this stuff is more or less untested, but will be tested throughout the next couple of weeks or so as I continue to get this content strategy on board and I want everybody to be a part of it. Honestly, it doesn't really mean much to me if it was all just my own creation. If we can benefit other people as well and bring all the success along with everybody else, 
That's what's kind of important to me. So feel free to join the conversation, offer your own resources, take a look at what we've been cooking up and stuff and what we will be cooking up in the future if you'd like to be a part of it. I assure you, stick with us, stick with the X, and you'll go far. Um, take that as you will. Anyway, we have our thing here and we're gonna add a couple bits of those orange bitters right on top, just a little bit of it. Yeah, that was, a, that was enough. All we needed was one. That's all we need is one. What a cute little cocktail there. Let me pop the angle back over here and I'm just gonna, I don't know. I don't usually put the bottles in the background, but that's, that's what we'll do. Put the bottles in the background. The lighting is sh very shitty for this, but I have a cocktail nonetheless. What a nice little guy. All right, sweet, sweet. It does kind of look like an Alaska. It does have that yellow characteristic to it. And the Alaska, ooh, the Alaska's good. Dude, dude, after, after the chartreuse stream, after we made our own Alaska, I went back and I made another one for myself because I, uh, I had described it originally as bolstering whatever gin you put inside of it. And I stand by that statement. Like, uh, an Alaska is essentially yellow chartreuse in gin, and it just makes the gin taste sweeter, better, almost candy-like. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful cocktail. It's great. It's delicious. And I love it very much. And I thank people for sharing that, obviously. Okay. It is the sweet part of a martini. It really is. So this is our... Ah, it's called a Peruvian. I'm so glad I actually wrote it on the board. And the Peruvian was made with some pisco, with some yellow chartreuse, and with a little bit of quote-unquote Le Lait Blanc. We didn't have Le Lait Blanc. We went with some Noily Pratt dry vermouth instead. And this is what we're left with. I don't believe it is garnished with anything. I didn't see anything to garnish it with. I don't even think it needs it. Needs some deet. Gotta make sure that the flies don't get to this one. It smells very, it smells very chartreuse on the nose. And chartreuse to me has a nose that is very similar to anise. Kind of a, kind of a, um, a licorice smell to it. And that's kind of what I'm getting. But it definitely smells like chartreuse. And it's got that look. It's got that yellow sheen to it that reminds you that there might be something chartreuse about it. Actually, this is so funny. There was a video that I watched on TikTok. And somebody was talking about things being chartreuse. -y. And then all the comments were chartreuse. Like, like, ussy, but like, chartreuse it's, it's hilarious. Hello, Cammy C. Maddie says hi again. Hello there, Stell. Hello there, Stell M, or whatever you want to call yourselves. Welcome back to the last bar of the next stream for a hot minute. You might not have caught the message, because I announced it in our Discord server, but I'm taking a little bit of break from live stream, so this will be the last time that you see me on the streams for a little while. However, I will still exist on Instagram, TikTok, and all the other major platforms and stuff. Don't you worry about it. It'll be fine. If you really want your daily dose of Cameron, there are plenty of ways to get your, get your fix, I assure you. Oh, that is so interesting. That is really interesting. Okay, so the way that I described in Alaska, which is gin and yellow chartreuse, right? That kind of adds a sweet, anise bolstering characteristic to the gym, which often comes at an angle from botanicals and floral notes. I guess the Pisco, on the other hand, has a fruity component to it. It is basically a brandy. It's a grape brandy from, I believe, Peru. Yeah, Pisco is Peruvian, I believe. That's why this is called the Peruvian. I think that also, that's all starting to track now. So instead of bolstering the more floral herby characteristics of the aforementioned gin, it's bolstering the kind of sweet fruity characteristics of the grape notes that I'm getting here. And again, it's kind of like the, if I were to describe the taste of the peel of a green grape, but without all the dryness, without all the tannins, that's kind of what I'm getting here. Except instead of it being like, let's say the tartness of a green grape, it's kind of like the skin of a green grape, but with the sweetness of, I wouldn't even say a red grape. It's kind of like candy. I, I'd say it has some extra sweetness there, and I want to say it's kind of like a com combination between like the green grape and the red grape, but it's really not red grapey at all. It's a different type of grape entirely. But it is sweet, and it is kind of licorice -y. And it's just interplays so interestingly with each other. And it leaves a really nice aftertaste too. Like I'm getting this, it's almost like I, I'm not a big fan of aftertaste that stick around, but this one in this case feels like I had eaten Honestly, that I took like a bite of something herbal. Almost like I took a bite of like, like mint or something. And that's the flavor that's sticking around, which is really, really nice. So it's even got that, that kind of 
not quite mentholing, but that minty, almost chocolate mint. Not chocolate like cocoa, but like chocolate mint. Chocolate mint is a specific type of mint. It's not spearmint, it's not peppermint. It's a different type of mint entirely. That's kind of the flavor that's sticking around. It's a little airy, it's a little vegetal. But on the forefront, what else does it taste like? It's that sweet grape note. That's really, that's really cool. That's an angle that I've, honestly, I can definitely see the difference between this and let's say in Alaska. Like there's two, two different flavor components, but still with that chartreuse kind of bolstering things up a bit. I don't know if the orange bitters really did anything there. I'm not really getting too much of that. Maybe there's a slight characteristic that influences those grapey notes that I'm getting. Grapey, oh my goodness, but that's all good. Chartreusey. Also, definitely hang on to the Discord with us. Uh, yeah, duh. We will be here when you get back from your break. Obviously, obviously, and you should totally join the Discord. Just totally hop on that train. I, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, if I were to look at this from a marketing standpoint, right? And I'm trying to convince you of why you should join our Discord. Uh, first of all, we've got some really amazing people there. Uh, second of all, I'm going to be there, obviously. But also, I plan on putting a lot of resources there for content creators and putting a lot of resources there for mixologists and other cocktail creators as well. I, for one, love cocktails. I love to find the different videos and articles and whatnot that talk about how to take your cocktail game to the next level. I hope to be creating content that also emulates that type of stuff as well. But in general, I feel like this world that we live in of trying to capture people's attention on the internet is a pretty difficult thing to get a grasp on. Some people have the looks, some people have the talent, some people just have the luck. But there's a particular component underneath all of that that could be summed up as, let's say, a, a some sort of strategy or some view of the world and how it actually works. And I really want to explore that. It's very, very interesting. So that's what I offer to you. It's very, it's kind of vague. I don't have much off to, else to offer aside from a community that you can be in to put yourself around the environment. If you want to change something about yourself fundamentally, put yourself in a different environment. Get rid of all those other Discord servers. Come to our Discord server. Get rid of the other bars. Come to the bar with an X. Anyway, that's that's my sales pitch, I suppose. It's very, it's very sporadic. It's very chaotic. I haven't quite worked on it yet. I'll be working on that, evidently, as the time goes forward. Brad says, also, one lucky member of the Discord will get to hang out with Anna on a semi-regular basis. Disclaimer, Cameron is that member. It's me. I, I, I'm marrying her. We're getting married in January. Dude, it's wild. That's one of the other... Dude, another reason why I had to put these things on hold for a little bit. <laughs> I'm really bad at keeping up with the uh, with the wedding stuff. Like, uh, we have a whiteboard downstairs. <laughs> this is so funny. We have a whiteboard downstairs in the bathroom that faces me when I sit on the toilet in the morning. Full transparency here. I forget about things very much. I am very tunnel vision sometimes, and I will often forget what is literally right in front of me. That's why my desk is a mess. That's why the apartment's kind of a mess. And so the whiteboard has on it, and has had on it for almost two weeks now that I need to be reaching out to my groomsmen about the outfits that we're gonna wear, pastel pink. It's gonna be great. And I haven't done so yet. So, uh, I'll get on that, I promise. January is so soon, and that church is so cute. Still needs to do all the things on the whiteboard. Yep, I do. I do. I will admit that. I have been a terrible fiancé. And maybe one day I'll be an equally terrible husband. We'll see about that someday. But in any case, Peruvian's done. Let's cover where we've been so far, right? As we always do when we end the bar with the next, I want to let everybody know what exactly we did. I will say as well, if you missed some of the recipes, they will be in the description of the VOD that comes out about a week from now. I will do a little bit of a recollection of what exactly we covered on uh, the, the Discord that we have on the Cocktail X blog, or so we can call it the blog with the next, if you will, which will continue to be updated with content as I figure out how to do it. It will be more sporadic. It's not going to be on a particular schedule until I can figure out this whole strategy thing and how to do it sustainably and not like run myself into the ground. That's one of the commitments I have to myself. And at some point I plan to deliver on that to everybody else as well. But as I kind of go underground for a little bit, I just want everybody to know as well that the good vibes will continue. Where's my good vibes fan? There you are. What this is all about is this. It's all about good vibes, no matter where you are. I need tasting notes on everything from start to finish. There will be tasting notes. I will have to recollect like that in the blogs, but I guess we'll do a little bit of a run through as we go through things. Where we started this evening was a request from our dearest Disney queen, and it was supposed to be a melon ball cocktail, but there's no Midori. We ran out of Midori. Actually, here's the empty bottle of Midori that we would have used if it actually had Midori left into it. So instead, we made something called the Le Apple Ball, which was some combination of strawberry lemon, of raspberry lemonade, strawberry lemonade, Stedka, some candy apple 
whiskey from Two Trees Distillery. We also had a little bit of Johnny Bootlegger Sour Apple Liqueur, and I think we added more stuff onto that. What else did we add? I don't remember if we added simple syrup or otherwise. In any case, this is kind of what we have here. Consumption. Oh, you know it, man. It kind of tastes like a candy apple. It's a lot more diluted now than it was previously. And Anna had some comments about how it was very whiskey for her because that candy apple whiskey is naturally a whiskey at the end of the day. But this does kind of taste like a diluted candy apple. I don't like that very much. Heading to bed says Kid Sandin. Good night, sweet prince. Oh, salute to there, there, sir. Salute to there, absolutely. You have a wonderful rest of your night. And thank you for popping into the bar with an X in the ever brief so moments that we have left, at least for now. But so that le apple ball is actually quite sweet. I think it's really carried by that candy apple spirit, which is very, very specific, and you probably wouldn't get your hands on it. But generally speaking, if you were to take that candy apple whiskey and combine it with a little bit of lemonade, you're gonna be just fine. Um, if you're not much of a whiskey person, you might be a little less fine, but I mean, I think the heart's still there. And that was our contribution from our dearest Anna. We moved on afterwards to a contribution that was sponsored in part by my youngest bro, BC Awesomest himself, who said, we want something purple. And I was like, well, if you want something purple, we could always do with a gin and tonic because purple gins exist out there. Empress gin is a really hot topic. Conniption Kinsip gin is also a purple gin that exists out there that was gifted us by our friend More Than Awesome. Uh, in general, I used our at-home infused butterfly pea flower infused gin with a little bit of tankery gin as well. That was one ounce of home in, uh, Bar With an X infused butterfly pea flower gin, which is purple, one ounce of our tankery gin, and one ounce of tonic water. We combined that all together and we had something that was nice and blue, then it turned a little pink, we added a little bit of syrup to it, and now we're left here. And it is very, very forward on those her herbal notes. It's very, very tonic-y as well. Actually, as it sat around and diluted, I think it, it doesn't taste as good as it did previously. That really hasn't sustained super well, but essentially it's just a gin and tonic. Except it's a specific type of gin, so we would call it a purple TNT. But because the purple came from the butterfly pea flower, I'm inclined to call it the PBFTT, or the PBFTNT, or the PBFTGNT. However you want to slice that. It's um, it's all right. It could have been better. Purple is great. I found a bottle of Empress that I hid from myself. Oh, Brad. Oh, Brad, my goodness. So let's see, where were we at next word? Also, many G&Ts gotta get drank quick. It's true, we gotta get them out of here at some point in time. So the next cocktail we moved on to was Kid Sandin popped in here with a recommendation for specifically Tom Holland as portrayed by, let's see, Tom Holland, who was playing a character in Netflix's Uncharted series where he makes a Negroni for a girl who smokes a cigarette at the bar afterwards. Uh, apparently he's a pirate as his full-time job in the movie. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if it's a series or a movie or otherwise. Uncharted, I thought was a game. So this is where we find ourselves. But the My Negroni, Tom Holland style, according to Uncharted, was actually this little bottle of this little pre batch Negroni that I keep in a container for those little moments where a little hair of the dog is necessary. It's been in there for a while now. Um, it's a, quite diluted. It's been sitting around. It's been oxidized. I mixed that, put it over ice. I uh, shook it up a little bit, put it over ice, and then uh, added some Turkish tobacco bitters from Fee Brothers on top of it. And it gave it an interesting characteristic to me. Negronis are rather sweet on the front, the forefront, the first flavor that you get, and bitter on the aftertaste, the stuff that you get in the back of your mouth. And I found that by adding a, just a couple of dashes of the Fee Brothers Turkish Tobacco Bitters, that's, um, that's these guys over here, that it adds a smoky characteristic to the end of the evolution and a savory characteristic to the beginning part of the evolution, which was actually pretty interesting, and I wasn't really expecting that. It wasn't necessarily a request per se but I was inspired by it. And it made something that I honestly feel like adding a little bit of bitters to my Negronis going forward might actually be an interesting angle that I might want to explore later on. I'm looking forward to whatever the future has to offer. And if that means putting a little bit of bitters into my already bittersweet favorite drink of choice, I'm all for it and I have no problem with it. The cocktail that came afterwards was this cocktail over here, I believe, called Dr. Melfi's Medicine. And that was a contribution by previous Bar With The Next guest, Imi Chow, who suggested that we put together a couple of different things. I wrote it down on my board over here. Um, oh, the apple liqueur was the other piece that Anna had added to the drink. I forgot that I was standing right in front of it. But Dr. Melfi's thing was created by utilizing, I actually didn't, I do have the recipe. Actually, I had it pulled up over here. That was created by combining Campari, gin, sweet vermouth, lemon juice, simple syrup, 
egg whites, and a dash of celery bitters. Usually you would use a little bit of uh, chickpea water there to kind of emulsify with the, uh, it's a kind of a, it's a, it's a sort of substitute for egg white. I don't know if the egg white was supposed to go in addition to the chickpea water, but we did a little bit of improvisation. So it's a sort of modified Dr. Melfi's medicine. And to me, that kind of tasted like, if I recall, it was a sweet, it was a dry, it was like a lemonade, lemonade compartment, like a bitter lemonade with a dry note to it. Let me taste it a little bit again. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's like the perfect lemonade, like the perfect like street side curbside lemonade with a bitterness and a dryness. It's like you combine the perfect lemonade with the perfect Negroni. And not like a perfect Negroni Negroni, like where you combine equal parts of the sweet vermouth and the dry vermouth. Not that kind of perfect Negroni. I mean like a Negroni that was made perfectly combined with that lemonade that was made perfectly. is very, very tasty. And it offers a nice sweet sour component to the otherwise sweet bitter component that I normally expected from Negroni. Also because it's got some egg white in it. So it kind of dries it out just a little bit and it modifies the texture ever so significantly. It's very interesting. Also, it was the first time that I was able to garnish with some little edible flowers, which ironically enough, at the very, very end, I managed to find in the store. Um, I'm sure we'll be getting more use out of those. Sustainable practices in mind. If you go to the store and you buy edible flowers, you should make a couple of cocktails and batch a couple of bits of content to create, to use those edible flowers, obviously. We'll keep that in mind going forward. The next drink afterwards we made was a recommendation from our pal More Than Awesome, who again is also another previous guest of the Bar With an X, who is the source of our chartreuse bottles here on stream, as well as a the, the donor during our little trip for that purple conniption kinship gin, which I honestly have not had a chance to fully appreciate, but I'm sure and hope to be able to do at least at some point. And if I have to drag him back up here, or he has to drag me back down there to actually fully enjoy it, I'm sure that's in the cards for us one day. But this is a cocktail called the Bijou, and the Bijou is basically a, it's a, ooh, I gotta pull the recipe back up again because I've forgotten. But it was a very good recipe that it involved, I believe, sweet vermouth, gin, green chartreuse, and orange bitters, I believe. I might have actually gotten that off the top of my head. I see Brad saying, it's a big bottle. Also, oh, also, oh no, we, we have to hang out again. Oh, oh no, oh dear me, I have to hang out with Brad again? I'm very much going to enjoy it. I have absolutely no reservations for that future. It is great. That was it, it was the one and a half ounces of gin, one, and a half, one ounce of sweet vermouth, three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse, two dashes of orange bitters, and you garnish that with a maraschino cherry. Thank you, my beautiful mud. I'm so glad that you utilized the power that you wield so, so well. And that is such a, such a nice combo. Oh my god, it reminds me so much of like the reason I fell in love with the Negroni to begin with. There's a sweetness from Chartreuse that pairs super duper duper well with the Carpano Antica Sweet Vermouth. And just like, it's carried forward by everything else in it. The, I'll admit, the Maraschino cherries that I use were kind of doused in moonshine. And I'm feeling that a little bit now, and it feels really, really good, not gonna lie. It's excellent. It has a sweetness that is undeniable. And it's got a couple of different layers to it that go forth to that kind of anise notes, that anise savory notes from the chartreuse to the cherry sweet, almost acetic notes of the sweet vermouth. It's just like, ooh, it's got a lot to unpack there. Uh, Brad says that he's enjoyed these for brunch, uh, perhaps on a number of occasions. And this feels like a, a brunch bijou feels like it might be in the cards in the future. That sounds like an excellent recommendation. But so, after the Bijou, we found ourselves on the final cocktail of the evening, which actually I can't attribute to any particular person, although there was contribution majorly from More Than Awesome, as well as Amy Chow as well, but we kind of all built this all together. This is a Peruvian cocktail, which was made by using, uh, uh, that was made by using two ounces of Pisco. I appreciate Brad on that pin there again. Uh, it was the two ounces of the Pisco, specifically Barsal, oddly enough, uh, one ounce of the yellow chartreuse and a quarter of an ounce of usually would use Lille Blanc there, which is a type of kind of lightly colored fortified wine type product. Honestly, I don't know too much about Lille Blanc, but it's something that you can buy in Whole Foods, which means it's at least a vermouth or a type of wine. I think it's more on the wine side of things, but I didn't actually have that. So instead we subbed out the Lille Blanc, which usually is the quarter ounce. There are about seven milliliters with Norley Pratt dry vermouth as per Amy Chow's request. And it tastes really, really good. And I literally just gave tasting notes on that, but it is 
It has a characteristic of a an alcoholic grape. It's got notes of grape, which pair really well with those more prominently sweet and almost honey-like notes of the chartreuse, which I'm getting a little bit more now than I did previously as it kind of warmed up the temperature a little bit. It really does kind of taste like honey and green table grape, now that I think about it. And that is just, that's delightful. Plus it's got like an interesting kind of radioactive, almost yellow color to it, which I think is very, very appreciable. And that's where we find ourselves. So we're about, it's like the two and a half hour mark. Honestly, I, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. The reason why that the, the hiatus is coming is because I've been very, very burnt out recently. I've been kind of tired recently. I get really, really tired from these streams and there's a lot of prep that usually goes into them. Luckily, I didn't have to do too much prep for this one. So I gave myself a little bit of a break on that. Uh, but it's something that I wanna do a lot more sustainably for the future. I, over the last couple of years or so, have developed such an interesting love and passion for cocktail mixology, but not even just cocktail mixology, but just for like content creation in general, I'll admit. so. Just to give a quick background of me in general, I grew up to be the smart guy. I grew up to become the engineer. I grew up to become the guy that thinks logically and with equations and mathematics and stuff. And although I did a lot of theater and stuff in middle and high school, I completely lost track of it in college. Didn't know how to kind of fill the hole in my heart that was left after kind of walking away from uh, theater and stuff. And when I found streaming based off of a friend of mine's recommendation, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I can meet new people. I can improv like multiple hours in a week. I loved it. Plus it gave me the time and opportunity to give me the motivations that otherwise a previous version of Cameron did not have the motivation to do. I didn't want to play games. I didn't have the time for cocktail mixology. I couldn't develop my own personal motivation to do things. And honestly, was just generally unmotivated with the way that my life was going. I wound up getting a really, really awesome job shortly out of college. And I was around the time where I was about streaming for, let's say a few months or so. And that perfect storm developed into me this really, really deep love for putting creativeness into the world. Sometimes being in the position that I'm in, there's not a lot of room for creativity. Sometimes it's very, very logical. It's very, very meticulous. It's very, very calculated. And this gives me a very awesome creative outlet to be able to share just generally things that I'm interested in with the world at large, which is something I want to continue to do because uh, I don't want it to ever leave. I don't want live streaming to ever be put on hold forever. I think that it is a core piece of my being that so, so long as I can get to a point where I can do it sustainably in a healthy way, I want to come back to it with brighter eyes, a healthier body, uh, more awake, and a better outlook on things. So that can also inspire other people as well. It means nothing if it just stays within this little microcosm of ours. If we can make a little bit of change out there, and at the very least put some, a smile on people's faces, then that is, oh goodness, the good vibes that we're all waiting for. So with that being the case, don't let him deceive you who puts a ton of work into all this. I do put a lot of work into all this. This takes a lot of time. I'll be fully transparent with that. Actually, and I wanna be more transparent with that going forward. That content creation channel is the place where I plan on putting things along those lines. Either be a behind the scenes stuff, how you could do this stuff too. I really wanna be able to bring this to other people as well. It's gonna be great. And with that, I'll take us to the end screen over here. That's all I've got for a while. I'd say the party has ended for now and it feels weird but not at all that bad i'm honestly not even that sad about it because honestly it's not like things are ending here either it's gonna be great this is gonna be great i have so much like like uh excitement for what the future may hold and it's just gonna be a little bit of a different form i'm not gonna leave this behind me completely every single person out there has been has had a positive impact on my life so far and that's just something that I'm really thankful for. I see Rich saying much love, I see Brad giving a lot of love, Garrett giving a lot of love, and saying a lot of love. We'll see everybody next time, whenever that next time will be. Again, if you can look over there, these are the other platforms that you can find me on. I am on TikTok and Instagram and Discord and YouTube and Instagram, and I am open to anybody who wants to have a conversation, a couple of uplifting words, whether you want to talk cocktail mixology or whatever your passion is. I'm honestly very curious to see what your passion is. and. You know what? Maybe you don't believe me. And the hardest part of any journey is taking that first step. So if you don't believe me, I would like to prove you wrong. Just send me a message. I'd just love to have a, I'd love to see where the conversation goes from there. It's not a goodbye. It's a see you next time. See you next time, everybody. Instagram stories, my guys. It's all on there. Everybody there. To all the love and all the support that I've received over here. I think as of ending this stream now, we hit about the 250 follower mark here on Twitch. And it's been an awesome, awesome two years so far. And I look very much, forward very much to what the future may hold. So to everybody out there, I don't care if you're young, if you're old, if you're new, if you're 
experienced, I suppose. I don't care if it's the morning where you are. I don't care if it's the night where you are, whether the moon is shining or the sun is shining, whether it's twilight, dawn, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, rock. I don't care what time it is out there because we exist in all different time zones and these videos ex like exist at infinitum. I say good vibes until the next time that we meet. And I hope it's a fruitful encounter. To everybody, no matter where you are, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure being your bartender this evening. Good vibe till next time, y'all. Bye. For now. <laughs>